Uh, just waiting on uh, March PPI coming through here. 0.2, there it is, 0.2 to the upside. Uh, we we're expecting 0.4 underneath this uh, pop-up here. 0.4 was the uh, forecast on the month over month number there for PPI, core PPI, 0.2 as well, versus 0.2 expected in line with expectations. Still waiting on that uh, core year over year print, 2.1% expected there. If you take out food and energy, 2.8%, a little bit downside here versus 3% expected. The year over year number exactly in line with expectations, 2.1% versus 2.1 percent on uh, the year-over-year -year number. So two days in a row, uh, we got some inflation data. This one a little bit better than the CPI side of things. We also got initial jobless claims data there, 211,000 this week versus 218,000 expected. 222 was the prior week's uh, print there on that. Continuing claims, 1.81 million versus 1.79 million. So a little bit of an uptick there on the continuing claim side of things. We are expecting uh, Fed's Williams coming through in about 15 minutes or so this morning. We'll get more uh, Fed speak. Collins then at uh, 12 o'clock right at lunchtime and then Bostick into the afternoon, uh, 1.30 p.m. So yeah, I mean, overall not, I mean, a little bit better than the CPI data obviously from yesterday, but um, a little bit of a wash. PPI not exactly uh, the most heavily watched as far as inflation prints. But it's a good here, especially with the 0.6% that we had uh, increased last time around 0.2, even though it was below estimates at 0.3, it's less than half of the the uh, the print that we got last time. So we'll see if the market digests this a little bit better than digested the CPI print. Here. Yeah, Wednesday offsetting, or Thursday offsetting Wednesday, I guess, here with the uh, overall market. I'm missing a little bit of data here, it looks like, on uh, the queues, but... Hey, we're positive. Just, just back to uh, pause there. There we go. Uh, we're just back to the top end of the range from late in the day yesterday for uh, both the S&P and the NASDAQ. Lots to get to this morning uh, when it comes to uh, individual movers as well. We'll touch on Apple, JP Morgan with a little bit of a negative note on Apple this morning. Amazon um, on watch as well. Some cost cutting possibly in their fulfillment side of things. Mm -hmm. I was reading through that um, late in the day yesterday when that came out and I was looking for Where's the robots? Where's the robots? Where's the robots? But it didn't really mention anything to that tune. Well, the robots definitely came all plenty, Brendo, because I was just reading an article this morning, 27,000 layoffs, the biggest layoffs in the history, I guess, of uh, North America or the United States. 27,000, that's a lot of different jobs that are being replaced here. Yeah, I guess they, they already have those um, moving shelves. Yeah. Have you seen those in the fulfillment center? It's crazy. If they, they just type into a computer what they want and then the shelves move and bring it to the actual... Okay, I didn't know about that. Yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. High tech. Anyways, happy Thursday. Good morning, guys. Yo. All right. There we go. I just noticed, like, I got the red on after yesterday. There's a hint of red in your shirt. And then the market decides to go up on a somewhat mixed number because core was as expected, but... PPI, I don't think it'll be all that nuts. Um, well, I didn't buy the dip yesterday. What, I mean, where, what? It's so this market crazy. Market is crazy resilient. It's so crazy because you look Bitcoin, at Bitcoin, seventy-one thousand. By the way, it barely even Rip held it. under that seventy. Like, we're, yeah, there was some sixty-seven in there. I think we had some sixty-eight, and then it just continues going. I mean, Amazon's about to fresh get some fresh highs as we speak. If this ever loads, you'll see boom. Oh, it, it's yeah. it's crazy. Right there, look at this. Bitcoin loving this. Like Bitcoin, but it, what dip? If this tells you that Bitcoin and the market are tied up, like yeah, Bitcoin cares about PPI. Like this is just a huge move to the upside uh, right there. Again, there's that 67,000. If you're gonna go over a uh, whoa, hello, maybe a two-hour chart. Like these are some random chart times here. But yeah, I mean, this is what we keep talking about. Bitcoin keeps holding the 64, 65, and look what it's doing right now. If we go over to a one-minute chart, we're starting to bump up. I was just looking at it before we came on here. I was like, let's see what it does around 70,000, and this is what it does: 700 dollars straight up on a 0.1 better. We got 0.2 versus 0.3 consensus there on PPI. That's all we need. And that's all we need, baby. And then the market goes all the way back up here. Uh, not, I mean, it's not huge, but we were down about half a percent. We've written down some longs and some short ideas here today. But there it goes again, the NASDAQ. It's just getting back to 18,250. That was a level that we wanted to look at yesterday if we broke 18,2. But again, look at this, we're just hopping out again. So yesterday we said stay calm if you were long, like 
you know, you still got into some support levels down there yesterday and that was nailed down at 18,100 or so. And I still think the same thing now. If you're short, I'm not sure that this is scary enough to do anything to get you out of your position. I would still say up here 18.4 would be the maximum and we could just dance. I wouldn't be surprised. I mean, this is too tight of a range, but next week we have earnings again. We have earnings starting tomorrow with the banks. So if the market's not gonna move too much on this PPI or CPI number, which, I mean, look, yesterday was a bad number. We were down 0.8. So now today we're up 0.2. So that's yeah, we're barely a dent in anybody dollar cost averaging or anything like that. So let's just continue to trade the best names and look for the best opportunities. Arm, Uber, AMD, they're all yeah, moving. We're still in the range, man. And you speak, you speak about like dip buys. Um, yeah, if you bought the dip buy in Amazon, it's like, really? We got that print and you can't even, you can barely even see the dip in some of these stocks. And that's going to be emblematic of the stronger of those mag seven names. Like this little, this chart and Microsoft and Google look pretty similar. Uh, the one that's moving, I want to say the most out of what I was watching is Tesla off this 170 level. So 170, that's obviously a big level. You had a double bottom in there. You don't know which way it's going to go. Like, I, know, I was basically like, if, it, if we break down under, I'd look short under. And if we break higher, there's no resistance. And, and you got to get to 175. So there's things that are in play. I mean, I still think, in t look, I still think Intel is going to be a fade, so I'm pretty good. I feel pretty solid about that. But you have to change your tone. You have a key price level. You trade off of that level, or wait till it gets to that level. I just, I just find it absolutely hilarious that uh, if this ends up, if we end up breaking, we end up breaking yesterday's high where we were at the CPI. And I'm not talking about Tesla specifically. Let's just look at the queue because it's the easiest way to pull it up. If that ends up happening. Like, give me a break. There's no veg I'm not doing any Vegemite, but it would be hilarious because I feel like yesterday there was some talk of, okay, maybe this is where we'll start to get a move to buy the dips on things that didn't give you enough of a dip on the long term. And then 24 hours later, if we were to basically be right back where we started, um, that would be the most bullish thing you could ever see. Or maybe it's just a gigantic trap. I have, um, before we go back over there, we, I, I do have an update. And as promised, ship, it's been brought in, baby. And that's it. So and now it's hard to see because whoever took this picture didn't do a very good job. But as you can see, this is me. Arms you up. See right there, arms up in the background. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hard to see. Is that a beer? This is, no, no beers here. Oh, I can't. Yeah. No, no beers here. Uh, my daughter's in here somewhere, my wife, my, everybody. There's ba uh, Barrett is right here. This guy, he has the fishbowl on, um, and they did take it down. Nice. So there it is. Congratulations uh, to the there's there's the league. They're the Warm Park Eagles, uh, right there. So a big a big win. Very very proud. And here's the mascot. <laughs> yeah, the mascot. It's it's one of the sisters, and she has her. Uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> awesome. Oh, look at this zooming in. Yeah, very hard to see. Yeah, that's good because kids' faces should be blurred. So that is yeah. right. So I did that on purpose. I blurred everybody's face on purpose. Well, you know what? That's and that's incredibly thoughtful. Yes. I think you know that's the kind of thing that a good that a good parent understands uh, in a situation. So like that. of course, and then the, a bunch of twelve-year-olds want to go out to the bar afterwards, like whatever. Obviously. So, yeah. So we we had another late night. So was Shuey or, um, or two? They were trying to. You should have seen the celebration in like the locker talking. room. No, honestly, it was like they won, like, honestly, like major league, like, I don't know, they were dumping bottles of water on each other, the coaches Boom. had champagnes, like, they were dumping champagne, it was, it was ridiculous. Well, so, the coaches had champagne? Yeah, and the kids were literally just dumping it on the coaches, it was, it was, it was wild, and then everyone was cheering it on, so it was, it was a nice time, but anyways, uh, all right, now on to the, uh. I want to the bigger and badder market as we Bitcoin is actually going to 70. We should have champagne. What's the, uh, it should be a champagne Friday every every Friday. Do you, you still have that? You could have up. mimosas. I just wanted to see what was Bitcoin at 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 8:30 yesterday was the only question I was. Oh, at 8:30 yesterday? Uh, sure. I have I have an app, I have, I don't use like a, a short term time frame chart. I was just very very curious about that. So Wednesday, whoa, 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 Wednesday, I gotta go all the way back. Why well, hate? Da, 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 Wednesday. And blah, 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 it was blah, right blah, here. Blah, blah. Yeah, it was like 60. Yeah, it was not too bad. It was like 68. It got as low as yesterday. So, 68. Yeah, 67.9. So 67.9 is the low. The overnight high is four, $500 away. So you are now like your, like your few Gs above the low on Bitcoin. 
and you're testing and you're gonna test that high. The great crazy thing about Bitcoin right now is you've got a situation where when the market was weak, it's almost turned into this weird flight for safety, flight for, flight for safety, um, where it's moving sometimes like gold is moving. I think it has to do with the halving. And then when the NASDAQ goes up, it goes up with it. So that's uh, all signs pointing to good things. Uh, the halving comes in like, uh, what was it, like the 18th or something like that. But uh, yeah, Bitcoin could test that local high, whether or not, you know, whether or not we break through the, and make an all-time high. Here comes 71 we'll see, immediately. We'll see what happens. But that I, 71 is pretty much, we're here right now. I told, I, I told Fabian yesterday, what did we say when, we, when I left here yesterday? We were, me and him were talking, and I said, you might as well just be buying Bitcoin, you know, and that was yesterday. Um, and you can see what's happening right now. So a nice little move up to 71. We're going to take it out. 71. We are really starting. I mean, honestly, I'm glad I sort of brought this attention here. Look at this. Bitcoin is really, really going here. So again, congratulations to all the bulls uh, out there. It seems like that uh, story is not stopping anytime soon, as is the NASDAQ as well, now up 0.3. It seems like crypto and the major tech indexes are kind of tied at the hip here. Yes, they are. Uh, Amazon, guys, just be aware, uh, moving around here. Uh, Andy Jassy, CEO Andy Jassy on uh, CNBC right now, talking AI. So we'll keep an eye out for uh, comments. So uh, just be aware if you're uh, looking at Amazon. Uh, a couple things to note here. We had, uh, this is the dollar. Dollar was green um, before that number. We've reversed. Uh, yields are also reversing. Huge day up across the board for interest rates yesterday and yields specifically. Um, we're still positive on the day for the 30-year and the 10-year, but uh, they are coming back in pretty quick here. So... Uh, definitely going to uh, benefit the overall market. I saw FedEx pop up on a volume scanner there, but yeah, nothing, uh, nothing doing. Uh, there's Amazon, meanwhile, taking out the highs through 187. Yep, they're still talking about AI. You had an interesting comment there um, saying that Amazon or, or Jassy himself suggesting AI is going to be their quote-unquote third arm of their yeah. their overall business yeah well the, the, what they focus on now brendo is uh retail their online retail store obviously and then they have prime memberships which is recurring revenue and then they have the cloud which is their biggest money maker so their fourth pillar that they want to focus on now is ai what that ends up being uh specific to amazon we'll have to wait and see we've seen some little uh tidbits come out there about you know shopping suggestions uh learning uh, your habits this that and the other but uh, I think uh, none of us really have a firm grasp of what this is going to be. Yeah, um, including some of these CEOs, I would say, at this point. They're um, obviously hoping, but, yeah, it remains to be seen. I'm just seeing KenView, um, not one we talk about uh, too much, but KVUE. Uh, Bernstein initiating coverage with an underperform, so downside a little bit there for uh, KenView. Uh, we're going to have Frank on later this afternoon. We'll touch on um, what happened yesterday not only with the dollar with CPI, but also this morning with this PPI print. We had the Bank of Canada hold yesterday on interest rates. We had the ECB hold with interest rates this morning. Um, so we'll get Frank's take on uh, the lay of the land here coming up this afternoon. Yeah, that'll be good. And <clears throat> Berenstein the bear. Uh, it's the Berenstein bears that I read when I was a kid. But uh, look, the, look, Amazon, you, you can have all kinds of key levels and plans and all that kind of good stuff before a number. And then after a number, things are just going to sort of play out how they do. So when the market moves up like this, uh, Amazon ends up breaking yesterday's uh, resistance levels. Didn't really want to take a break in either direction yesterday or today. But I, I like the long. I mean, this is a stock that, like a lot of others, bounced, but then bounced and immediately started just holding previous support and gliding right back into like the same closing range that it had been in for three days in a row. Like you closed here at 185 change, then you closed 185.80, then you closed 185 half. Like within a half a dollar, you had this consolidation level in Amazon. So if we get back into that consolidation level where clearly there's like there's some good equilibrium, and I'm, you're bullish on it, you buy into it. We get a dip down in, Amazon's one, uh, that'll be a buy. I kind of wrote down the key level was gonna be 184, like an Alamo, but that's because if you were to break this one to the downside, I wouldn't have wanted the long um, beneath that 184 level on PPI, despite the fact that Jassy's saying all the right things. So you know, we'll see how this one goes. It end, might end up taking out the top. I was kind of joking around about the lack of a pullback. Like you can barely even notice yesterday relative to the daily chart. And we talk about things that have not, that have not done much of a dip. 
you can't you can't say this about Nvidia, which had some healthy dips on the way to the upside. This just hasn't really done much of anything uh, except glide higher. There has been only one or two outlier days to the upside, and certainly not many to the downside. So we just the trend is your friend, and the higher time frame says long. The support level holding yesterday says, okay, you've got a consolidation off the top, buy dips into uh, potential 52-week high break, because that's what could happen, even by like 9.30, who knows? Yeah, the 52-week high is not even, I think it's 188, wasn't it 187? I think it's, yeah, it's only 187.30, you're it's only 30 right cents away, so right you're here. 30 cents away, it's 187.34 right now, so that's almost already been breached. I think it's great news for Amazon. I mean, you know, the more, and I'm writing this about Google. Google's gonna be my number one sticky note name, but this is like just, what are we doing here? You know, I mean, it's, I don't wanna short this, no way. I don't think that today would be the right day to do that. If you get extended, there was a 188 wick, I'm talking about 52 week high close, um, but you know, we've, we've gotten up to that 188. We'll see what it wants to do up there. It, there's still 45 minutes. This market is not even, like, as, as the NASDAQ came down there, Amazon, I mean, it went down 20 cents. Like, if, if this market continues to go higher, Amazon's going to be a monster uh, into that open. So, yeah. It's not even on the sticky note because of this, but, you know, 186, definite dip buy. You just want to buy the best names. And uh, right now, it looks like whatever... Jassy's talking about the market likes, and that's, and that's great news. I mean, I don't know. PPI is not going to affect Amazon. We already talked a little bit about um, their business and just how dominant they appear to be. Now they have AI. They're adding that into the, into the uh, mix as a talking point. Uh, Amazon, um, uh, the cloud has been a huge, huge success for a while. They don't even make that much money on their retail side of things. So, I mean, the consumer does stay really strong. And so does Amazon. So yeah, I, I, I like this name for dip buys. Maybe 186 is maybe not even, you know, we could open up to a big sell potentially if they don't like, like if the market can't hold. So then you could get 186 for sure. I think that's a good starter spot there. But then if, if we're not getting a lot of shares down here at 185, then I need to be reminded of that in the chat. So 185 for Amazon for sure for me right now is looking really solid. But as Neil and I talk about this all the time, it's very difficult to step in when you have CEOs, earnings calls, things like that talking because he could just say one little thing like, oh, we expect retail margins to be down, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden like, what? And then they could smack that or something about anything. So just be careful with it. But yeah, if that open, this is anywhere near 186, I think it's worth it. And then 185, if all is well, we buy some Amazon. Uh, Fabian, let me know when uh, Luis is ready and we'll bring him in. Okay. Uh, sorry, did you say yeah? Okay. Uh, we'll, we'll bring in Lu Luis Barbado. He's joining us uh, from the real trading office over in Barcelona, Spain in a second. There's a ton, and we were actually talking about this yesterday morning. There's been a ton of these little um, smaller companies, low float names flying around again this week. Um, typical for, you know, a week going into inflation data when there's not a heck of a lot else going on. Uh, it's been a bit of a tight range for the overall market, but um, this one, RLYB, want to get his take on this. Uh, up on a and j deal, it would appear. Uh, this one's actually not super tiny. I mean, 30 plus million here as far as the uh, overall market cap is concerned. So um, whenever, Fabian, you are ready to go, let me know. Um, I mean, you look at these from time and time. It's been, uh, it's been a busy week for small cap land. You know I love my small cap. Brendo, yeah, this one started moving yesterday in the uh, aftermarket, popped up there at 4 o'clock. The closing print at 8 was $2.30. That's exactly where we opened up at 4 a.m., and it has been higher highs and higher lows. You can see there the black line. That is the volume weighted average price. It's respected VWAP the entirety of the morning. Let's see what this one brings, and let's see what Luis thinks about this one. Yeah, a lot of um, – that one's by far the highest as far as volume is concerned. There's a few other ones. Uh, moving around here, all in that dollar, uh, dollar fifty kind of price range this morning. ALPN stands out. Uh, Alpine Immune Sciences to the upside to the tune of uh, 35, 36 percent right now. So we're still um, floating around at some levels. That uh, that's another one that's been a uh, former runner here. But uh, BSGM, another one. Rent, another oh. one as well. Um, that one pops up from time and time. Uh, also, I've heard that name before. I was showing Adira this in the morning, Brendo. This 
actually IPO'd back uh, during COVID and it was really bad. I mean, uh, look at this. We were almost at $500 November 2021. I get it. We've been, that's when Jerome Powell said inflation is not transitory and the market tank, but we're trading on $9.60. I know that there was a one to 20 split to bring this one back into compliance, Brendo, with the NASDAQ requirement of $1, but it has been down into the right tough look for Rent the Runway. Um, overall, as I mentioned, uh, Fabian's still working hard here to get uh, Luis uh, good to go as far as uh, coming on this morning, but uh, the overall market, guys, about to take out the highs here. Yeah, it's only a 0.3% move for the NASDAQ currently, 0.12 for the um, S&P, but uh, what a difference a day makes overall. We can uh, jump over to the guys. Yeah, and 24 hours, a lot can happen in 24 hours in this market. And, you know, we were talking about, look, I mean, I, I joked around one day when I said NVIDIA wouldn't hit 850. And, but at the time, I was, like, I was kind of serious. I said I'd be, I didn't say it wouldn't happen. I said it, I would be very, very surprised if it did. And the only good thing you can do is, like, despite that, I didn't, I tried not to short it until it got to a key level. So if you find yourself... Like, I might have been today, okay, well, what's the key price? Like, obviously, you've got this, like, a support level here, like, eight, 860s or so. And if it breaks that, the 850 level comes into play. Well, now it's in the middle of nowhere. And so it's trying to break yesterday's high. So a stock like this in reaction, if I liked short, I wouldn't be shorting this. You know, it's like wait for it to get to the next level up and just put a little bit more patience on it. But it's not... It's not as if you can throw, you don't throw everything out there. There's always something that you'll probably like regardless of the reaction to the market. Um, Intel back if it gets to two and above the 38. And even then, now that I look at it, I mean, I wrote down 37 and a half and 38 uh, quarter for short levels. But we're at 0.38 or 0.4 in Intel when you have like a 0.2 market move to the upside. So it would seem like it's stronger than the market. However, most of the charts that we've shown you, it's like Amazon back into and, and higher levels from yesterday, uh, NVIDIA back to the levels where we were and then breaking back out. Well, this looks a little bit different from the others. That's still in the absolute bottom of the channel. So the only reason Intel is up 0.35% and better than the overall market is because of how far it fell and the fact that it wasn't really doing anything. It was actually at those lows when it was at that 37 low when the number came out. So a lot of things are set up here for this. I think 37.5 at the open, if that breaks out, I gotta wait for the 38 level and heck, I might even take a 37 uh, breakdown trade. The other thing that's frustrating is, I can't, when I sat down today, uh, Rivian was at, like Rivian was at the, in the teens. And I'm like, okay, like today, like today, like $10 is gonna happen today. It'll come back. Because if we had stayed bearish overall, I felt like it was gonna be the day. And of course, Rivian is now bounced to the 10:30. But I don't care what day it happens. 10:30, yeah, that'll. Whatever day it happens, we're just going to be ready for it. But I feel like the more I look at it, the less likely it is to break. Speak about ready for something, Luis. All right, as promised, there he is, Luis Barbado, joining us from the uh, Real Trading Office over in Barcelona, Spain. On a, uh, it's supposed to rain three straight days here. Uh, Lewis, so I mean, give us a weather update, please, so we can be happy. Yeah, yeah, it was it was raining for some days here. You're right. All right, we need so it. We it need it's it. not it's, it's big, not always. Uh, I, mean, I don't Barcelona. know how you say in English. Dry season in Spain for months and months. So really, we really need the drain, the rain and the water. There you go. Uh, let's talk about the market. Um, RLYB, we mentioned um, teaming up with J&J, &J, it looks like. I was just reading on a blood disorder uh, development uh, deal, it would appear. Big news after the close yesterday. Uh, we're taking out the highs right now here, $3.40, up 108%. What are you thinking with this one today? Yeah, absolutely. This is the main ticker uh, today. It's uh, rotating the float right now with seven, 17 million traders so far. Uh, there is difference of the flow depending on what uh, website you check, but it's around 20, 25 million shares probably. Uh, rotating the flow pre-market, moving up 100%. Uh, and it's taking out the, the highs of the pre-market now. It is true that we are not seeing these crazy runners for the last weeks. We've seen the first push, very hard push after the bell opens. And after this push, we see some weakness in the in this kind of a stock. So let's see, let's wait for the first push. 
probably around 350, 360, 370 clear outs. And then we're looking for shorts on the backside on this one. And, and worth noting, um, on a stock like this, it's, it's one that barely trades. Usually, I saw the uh, average volume around 200, 250,000 shares. So as you said, um, heavily, heavily traded this morning. E-L-Y-M, uh, another one here, upside in a big way. Tell me your thoughts here. Yeah, as you said before, it's very important, not only the, the volume pre-market that is trading, but the comparison with the usual volume traded pre-market and during the day, and also comparing to the float. We don't look only the volume as an uh, absolute number. We measure against the usual, the average volume every day and the float, very important. We measure the volume against the float. Uh, L, uh, e -L -A, sorry, E-L-Y-M, uh, it's another ticker interesting. If if uh, really doesn't trade a lot of volume, this trade even less usually every day. So let's see, we're looking for a 435, 440 break, uh, high of uh, pre-market. And if it breaks there, we're gonna look for longs uh, as soon as, as so much as the, the bids are popping in and, and holding the price, we're looking for this midpoint and this high frequency trading buying over over the high of uh, pre-market. If it get, if it's narrowed down the volume, we're looking for the backside short. Um, another one here, a little bit higher priced, and it's worth noting. You know, typically we talk about those two, three, four dollar type names. Um, ALPN, um, and you know, it's totally fine if that's one that you know you're not even going to look at today. But this is still in the uh, immunosciences space, so one of those therapeutic type companies that can pop up on a news headline. But ALPN, sixty four, sixty five dollars in or about that kind of price range today. Um, what are you thinking here? I, I think I'm not going to trade it, but I think it's a takeover company. I would bet. I haven't checked the news, but if you check, Great I'm 99% sure that this is a taking over. This is a IP, uh, OPA. Uh, so some another company is going to buy this stock because it's moving at 35%, 36 not moving huge bids, huge offers. That'll give us a clue that this is a taking over. See the price action, I, uh, I, I tend to agree. Um, let's talk about SPRC, one that can get going from time to time if it wants to. Only 30% here, this is a low float name. Yeah, this is a ticker we like, as you say. Uh, it has some criminal records uh, moving up. We have at least in the last couple of months, one, two, three, four, like six crazy movements of 100% of 50%. It used to be a statistically a stock that ran run up like 50 or 80% and go down all the way down during the day or maybe day after. So very interesting stock. Let's first let the shorts squeeze and burn the accounts and then we're going to look for shorts. Only when it shows some weakness. Don't go front side against this one because it, get, it gets really, really dangerous. It's a 2 million float only. So be aware, it's trading now, how much volume? Uh, 6 million three times the float. So it's a potentially runner, sort of the squeezer here. Yeah, uh, great point. One of those ones you can get um, pretty hurt on if uh, you're not careful. Anything else catching your eye here this morning, Luis? Not much. I think you mentioned most of the interesting stock. We're checking also, of course, the stock we were taking for the last days, like ADIL, uh, VSGM, you know, VMR, the Israeli company. So. Not always the first day is the most interesting. The more it is the most crowded and the most most volume. But sometimes on second and third day, when not so many people is looking the stock, is not so crowded, then you might have a better risk reward trades. Best of luck on a Thursday, Luis Barbado from the Real Trading Office over in Barcelona, Spain. Always a pleasure. Thank you very much, Brendan. Actually, the, yeah, that last point is, is a really good one because sometimes you will see those, you know, these low floats or just call them the high flyers or whatever, whatever adjective you want to give to these names where you'll give up on it after, you know, the first day, it's maybe it slows down, does a bit of a pullback and holds VWAP or something. And then the volume come day two or maybe even day three doesn't look quite as appealing, but the setup for it can be a little bit more clean. And because there's less actors in it, short term traders, then there's less resistance as it's going up. I find when it gets crowded with short-term traders, what ends up happening is you get to levels like these and it's just so obvious for everyone to start selling. So anyone in the money, 
uh, it'll sort of clog it, clog it up. And on a day two or a day three, you'll have a few less of those traders in there. And if it does happen to go, you get a little bit more uh, free action. But you still need that volume. I mean, the first day, the extra volume is going to be fantastic for sure. But I do like that point. Um, of course, our ROYB is at one of those big levels as we speak at the 350. But it's got room to go higher. And we got some room to head over to Adara for some upgrades in... <gasps> Coffees, upgrades and downgrades, but yay, coffee. That's all good. Randy in the oh, yeah. house. Thanks, Randy. Yeah, I saw Randy in there. I went and got this. Look at this. There's an egg with a broccoli. Oh, I hate broccoli. Like an egg omelet with a broccoli and cheese. Why does it have to be broccoli? I don't know. Randy, I saw Randy in there. He was reheating one. I thought that was a good idea Spinach. earlier. So. You went one and one there? You're kind of mixed really. today? But it was right. already a bear. You didn't... Uh, yeah, I turned it to a bull. Yeah, he was just straining him out there. Oh. Uh, we're apparently we're supposed to go. We to were that. talking about Trader TV Live Summit. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, know. there is uh, there are upgrades and downgrades apparently. every single day, and today is one of those days. Yeah, starting up here, I know there was an upgrade here from Nike. Uh, for Nike, sorry, from B of A Securities, it's trading a little bit higher. Nice look. DoorDash also getting an upgrade here from Moff and Nathanson. Occidental getting upgraded by Scotiabank and another oil related name also with the Scotiabank update that's going to be Chevron. Downgrades, Airbnb kicking off the list. You're trading a little bit to the downside after this downgrade from Needham. Robinhood as well getting price target increase but a downgrade from Citigroup. Applied Materials getting this downgrade here from Deutsche Bank and last but not least Citigroup downgrading Reliance here. So a bit of a mixed bag. Lots of the energy names though on watch to the upside guys. Good. Uh, during the midday. Uh, technology is moving more into sports. Shout out to Fabian. He's been solo for the past couple of days. Remains back with us tomorrow. So uh, Fabian doing uh, double time uh, for the past three days. So uh, great job. Shout out to Fabian. Let's uh, get into what we need to know here heading towards the open uh, on a Thursday. Sharif, lead us off. 5208, guys. That's where we closed off yesterday on the ES June contract. We're right back above 5200, but we did dip below that 100 point level ever so briefly yesterday. So if we break down below 5200 on the open, go ahead and look for 5175 as support. That is yesterday's support that also takes us back to March 15th and March 11th when we had support there. To the high side, if we really get going here, 5250, that takes us to the crest on April 8th and, uh, sorry, um, March 8th and March 14th. Uh, all of uh, what you're about to hear is uh, going to be on that coming up this morning. If you haven't done so, make sure you grab it, go to the watch list or go to the website and then sign up for the watch list and you get everything you need to know delivered right to your inbox every single day. Here is Apple. Nice move back higher here. Currently, this is a 15 minute chart um, with the overall market. Um, I mean, there's nothing significant. JP Morgan with a nice note this morning. Um, raising or lowering their price target, I should say, to 210 from 215. But I mean, there was some positives as far as the comments were concerned, um, talking about the latter half of the year possibly picking back up. Well, uh, Jamie and uh, Tim were in the same room yesterday, so maybe something <laughs> happened. Uh, maybe something happened that year yesterday. There was a 50 that went across uh, the table. You never know. <laughs> JP Morgan, yeah, they reiterate their overweight rating, but drop the price target. Um, on the other side of things, it looks uh, as if that there was a hack, an aggressive hack here. To, uh, it, it affected users in about 91 countries. It's called the mercenary spyware attack, and it's uh, a lot more um, you know, malicious than other ones. Uh, other types of attack. It's basically going after lawmakers here. It's trying to access their iPhones remotely. So Apple sending out messages to a lot of the people who they believe were affected to let them know that their phishing email is out there. So we'll see if that has any effect, Brendo. Yeah, we were, we were talking about Amazon um, early on this morning. We'll get to it coming up here this morning as well. But uh, Jeff Bezos was also at that uh, dinner, maybe calling Andy Jassy this morning. But um, any thoughts, guys, for Apple today? <laughs> well, the big wigs rubbing elbows as they probably do from time to time. I mean, let's be real. Like you, when you roll in circles like that, which we're prone to do from time to time, you know, you're gonna obviously not. You know, it's <laughs> you're gonna get all your fun conspiracy theories out there. Now, hacker, no hacker, no hack. Apple has been uh, getting whacked recently, and it's the, unfortunately the chat the the chart looks. <laughs> 
feels okay. Yeah, hack and whack. That's good. Hack I don't think we've used that before. I like that. Well, the, the, the price action's been whack because you look at Microsoft and. Has it been wiggity, wiggity, wiggity whack? That's. Is inside out. Is I wiggity, mean, will it jump, whack. jump today or not? I don't know. What do you think? I'm not thinking it has a jump in it. Like, there's, it could, it could move up, but I. I just feel like there'd be more strength in an Amazon or a couple of other names than Al than than uh, Apple. It's just it's still been a little bit sick. You, it cannot seem to break away from this support level. We've been consolidating down here. Even the bounce today, this is one of the names. It just cannot seem to break through yesterday's range just yet. So if you're not above 169, then then the long has to be off of the support that was shown on the CPI number. If you like the long, I just don't know about buying it up at the top until it shows buyers above 169. I think you'd have to wait for the bottom. And if we do pop, then the 170, like the CPI levels, that actually makes some sense to me because this has had all kinds of trouble breaking through. Like, look at the upward moves and the lack of, lack of extension. Every time this stock has gone up recently, there's been... One instance, and that was sort of in here through the 71, where it was able to make a second move up, and then that just preceded a gigantic move to the downside. It's been a fade on pops for a while in Apple. I think you just, it's, unlike, it's kind of like Intel for me. I think you just wait for it to pop, get past 170, and then start looking for a curl. Yeah, I'm not terribly bullish on you, Apple, yet. Yeah, we didn't, um, we didn't have this, rate. well, we, we looked at these levels yesterday, and they held, so... You know, yeah, I, I'm looking for like bigger catalysts than kind of upgrades and downgrades, but at the same time, it has this huge support. I mean, it's not, it's just from yesterday, but 167.50, like if we can get down into there, I don't think we pull back this far. And if we do, this could be a great, I mean, this is a great long. If you're looking for spots, honestly, if you're looking for spots to like put a lot of shares on something that has a good chance of, going up like 20 or 30 cents. Like, I don't think this name runs like dollar club type of stuff on big shares. It could run dollar club, no problem. But I just don't know if there's any levels here where you'd want to sort of, you know, layer into other than the bottom that we saw yesterday. Because even if you get into this area where we are right now, there's a lot of, and I don't have volume profiled up or anything like that, but there's a lot of distribution in here between like 68 and 69, just over the last couple of days. Like this is like a week. So I don't know, good news popped us to 172. Bad news yesterday brings us down to 167. So until we kind of get out of these ranges, I just feel like you play the tops and bottoms on Apple. So we'll wait for a better catalyst for me, but if the market does pull back, which right now, so yesterday was horrible. Remember we're like, hold the line. So that was down 0.9, add back 0.4, you're down half a percent in two days off of rate cuts being pushed huge. It was three, when Frank, we have Frank on this afternoon, but when Frank was on on Tuesday, it was a 2% chance of uh, no rate cuts at all. Now that's up to 15% for the year. So we've gone up seven times the chances of a rate cut in 24 hours and the market is basically flat. So if we're gonna sit here and talk about rate cuts being that important, I feel like that's wrong. We are entering into earnings season, that's what's gonna matter in my opinion. These rate cuts, it just push kicking the can down. And if we're even not even gonna have any rate cuts, obviously that's gonna be negative for the market. But like I just said, from 2% to over 15% right now, and the market is kind of flat on that, Sure, we'll take that, I think, nine times out of 10. So let's just see what this market does today. I feel like the resilience is there and we want to buy dips and Apple might be that one at 168, 167. Uh, Amazon, as we mentioned, uh, I mean, the note itself this morning was on the fulfillment side, some cost cutting. Andy Jassy was on CNBC uh, talking about a whole wide array of different things, the consumer right through to AI specifically in the uh, company's plans for AI. So, uh, yeah, it was negative to start this morning, but uh, definitely no longer 0.7 to the upside. This was kind of an interesting note as well. Uh, they came out saying they're on track to launch their uh, first production satellites in 2024. So, uh, I mean, it'll get to a point, I think, where, you know, Elon satellites and Amazon satellites are just crashing into each other if it's that much. But I mean, I, I haven't even read anything about what they're planning on doing with said satellite chat, whether it'll be like an internet product yeah, yeah. like Elon or not. You're gonna have to get a traffic warden up there, Brendo. Uh, no, seriously though, look, um, 
we know how aggressively Amazon is looking at investing in AI. We know about the two and three quarter billion that they invested in Anthropic about a couple of weeks ago. So we'll have to see how that all pans out. A lot of good stuff coming uh, apparently from Anthropic. Also, Brendel, they added a new board member uh, to their board there, Andrew Nigg. Um, he is a renowned AI pioneer who previously led Google Brain and also worked at Baidu, so experiences on both sides of the world there. Um, he's going to replace Judy McGrath, who's been on the board since 2014. We're right back to recent highs. You've got to go back a couple of days, but uh, 188, 189, guys, could be a thing today. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I think it's gone. Yeah, we already talked about Amazon a little bit, but it's, it's already at that 52 week high. I mean, like, like pennies away from it at this point. So I'll just kind of look for the dip buy. I'm not going to buy the top. I'm not going to buy it right into resistance. I liked 85 when it was just above 86. Going to look back in the consolidation range that we've had the last couple of days. I just like the names that are, that are strong and holding that higher, that higher note. Like something that just gave up like everything else did, but then completely ignored all of that action on the way back up to show you the same levels were significant, that gives you something to work off of. Because it's, it's so easy to see, okay, that was just a complete wick liquidity grab underneath. And the Apple chart's a bit different, the Intel chart's different, like they're consolidating at the lows. This one's consolidating higher up, so I wanna buy that consolidation uh, level on Amazon. We'll see if it comes back in to be able to pick something up on AMZN. But uh, yeah, just churning on all cylinders up here. Uh, impressive looking daily chart. Like what, else, what are you gonna say about, about this uh, that's negative? If it fails a break of the high, then I will be a little bit more careful uh, with the dip buy, but until it gets through it, I'll sit on the bid. Yeah, I'm not sure. The space is, uh, is quite a big area uh, up there. Hopefully the satellites don't run into each other. And then we have uh, some bigger problems on our hand. But I do like what Shreve's mentioning. That'd be That'd cool be to have fine. some traffic cops up there. That'd be pretty sick. Uh, but no, a pullback into 186 is going to be great. Um, this is why, honestly, I just feel that you want to buy the best names all the time, especially in the NASDAQ. Oh, man, that's a bad wick up there, so I can't zoom out too much. You had one dip into the 200 period. And that was on that dreaded October night, which was close enough to Halloween, where everything made a bottom. And that was just coming in. It, I mean, I don't have volume on here. There was probably extended volume in these couple days. Made that hit to the 200 period and then just absolutely gone. It hasn't even, I mean, there's a 50 period retest. What we look at sometimes is how far extended we are from the 50 period. And right now, if we can get up to 190, that is $20 up. And as a percentage point, about 10% up um, from the 50 period moving average, that's quite large um, of a move. It's similar to what we had here, where we kind of leveled out again um, and then caught up with the 50 period. And then even right here, we had a similar 10% move, which caught up and came back. So I like the story, but you know what, man? Whenever you have these kind of targets, a lot of people that I asked were wrong, and probably myself as well. I thought NVIDIA was close enough to 1,000 that it was going to come closer, but I guess it got to 970-ish. I'm not sure what the I was. So does Amazon have 200 in it? I mean, I think it probably does. Their earnings report comes, let me see. I'm just so impressed with the way Amazon's trading, and I, whenever I see stocks like this, we say, oh my God, NVIDIA is up 200%, this and that, so we take some off. I just wonder if it's getting to be time, as we showed you, the extension on Amazon. Is it time to get some out? April 25th, okay. so it's only two weeks away. Um, this is probably going to ramp. I wouldn't surprise if we get to 200 before earnings. People will be buying calls. Join Daniel Shea tonight on the Market Recap Show, where I will, if I remember, ask her about Amazon and uh, what we think about their earnings coming in because uh, this is looking really super strong. We always talk about getting positioned for earnings well before the earnings date, so you're not paying the premium and all that on the volatility for set options. So um, just watch out now, Amazon up 0.6, which is kind of matching the market right now as we almost get back everything from yesterday. So, wow, what a resilient market, 15 more minutes, news on Rocket Lab as well. Again. All right, let's talk uh, some. Hey, it's Neil Chan. Uh, let's talk some crypto. 1.2% right now for iBits, uh, ETF side of things. 
Uh, 71,000 almost coming into play here for Bitcoin this morning. So all of these back to the upside in a decent way. Um, watch 40 and a half here for this. I mean, if you go out on the uh, daily chart, that was that high. Uh, for IBIT, that's just one of many, obviously, ETFs. Yeah, keeping an eye on the inflows and the outflows of the ETF helps kind of gauge uh, the sentiment towards crypto at any one time. And uh, the inflows have started exceeding the outflows by um, a margin of two to one, especially when it comes to Grayscale's uh, GBTC, their trust. So we'll keep an eye on that. But like you said, we're approaching 71,000 and every single name in my crypto watch is green at the moment. Yeah, there was a um, yet another Wall Street Journal report on Boeing. Uh, Boeing finds executives got an extra $500,000 in perks from private jets in a filing. Uh, again, that's uh, Wall Street Journal reporting that right now for BA. Boeing, Boeing, Boeing. We just, um, yeah, we, I mean, we, we talk about Boeing. I just want to talk about Rocket Lab oh, just real quick. Yeah. It's not a huge move, but it is moving around a little bit. I know there's some traders that like this. Um, so, I, and only because I brought this news, it was selected for a $32 million Space Force um, project there called, uh, called Deliver the Victus Hayes Tactic Responsive unit to space so that whatever sounds that really is cool go find it out. anyways i just i saw it spike up there it's not it's not huge but um yeah look we had liked boeing uh, battling back and it was a good story until it wasn't again they had changed management they got a nice uh, spike up there their ceo hit the floor but then now it's been eight straight down days last time i said to i think it was Brittany in the chat Goodbye when she bought 175 because it was. And you almost got to the 50 period moving average. That was tough to see because anybody that bought down here, I thought you could have at least got back to 200. And if you broke that, then maybe 210, 205 is again in play. I don't even remember what the latest news is. It seems like we, we, you say this all the time, Neil, can there be a week or month without some sort of a disaster right. happening? And it doesn't look like that's the case. So uh, there was 737, 787, 7. Insert numbers here, max, airliner, whatever. Um, I shouldn't trash it, say anything bad about Airbus. But Boeing just continues to hit some of these levels that really look good to buy, I think. But then you're fighting the bigger story. And that is, is that can they get their um, controls under control? I mean, uh, you know, will they continue to have FAA worries about the standards of the planes they're putting out? I mean, that's going to be a problem especially if China stops buying, that's gonna be a huge problem. The deliveries were already significantly lower and they were already, I thought they were guided lower. That's potentially as well a problem here. That might not be true, but their deliveries were released lower and I think they had mentioned potential problems heading forward now as they get investigated and have to ground some of their operations. So I don't like Boeing here. I know that they're up today, but Unfortunately, I can't wrap my head around buying anything unless you're dollar cost averaging, and then this isn't a horrible level for Boeing. I mean, well, it's got a double bottom, and it will fly again. It's got a double bottom at 73, but they report in like two weeks, so you can always just sort of wait for them to report and see some hopefully good news come through, and then buy it. So 173 is a day trading level gives you a double bottom. I think that's in there. But it's on the runway. Yeah, it's it's on the runway, but it's yeah, getting taxied. It's either getting taxied like back to um, the hangar, or it's getting ready to take off. I feel like it's going back in the hangar. I'd rather right wait now. in the I'd rather wait in the gate than on the runway. There's nothing worse than you having to wait on the runway. There we go. On the plane. Okay, see there here's shout out to the boring man. What's so you saying? see, no, but this this is what we talked about. I remember when the Alaskan door flew off Boeing and, and Sean said me, we all said it, short, 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 short. Boeing was at 228 when we said it. Great call. Thank you, boring man. That's what we're talking about. But that's the thing, and we always say this all the time, and sometimes it's wrong. But when there's smoke, there's fire. And I remember one of the best trades that I had last month, I think, or I don't know if it was even this month, we had, it was on that late afternoon day where a story came out um, and then it just tanked. It might have been this one. I think it was 187 into 183, 184. And since then, it's just downside as well. So shout out to the boring man and everybody that's been looking at this. I, I'm here to say I liked Boeing. We had talked about that on the podcast, but then... Um, we had changed our mind, and that was that. We remember we were making fun of the iPhone survived. Yeah, of and we, there was all, and we were making well, fun of the palm olive, the dish soap. 
Uh, it just gets worse for Boeing. Okay, Google apparently has some fiber uh, to talk about. Yeah, kind of an interesting story here for uh, Google today, investing a whole bunch of money into um, improving connectivity to Japan. Uh, yeah. in the way of fiber optics. So, um, I mean, not something that I've read about Google doing before, so entering a new space. Yeah, it's going to be interesting here uh, to the tune of a billion dollars. Brendo, uh, they're looking at partnering with these companies. These are over-the-counter over the counter companies. KDDI, it trades under KDDI, Fabian, uh, KDDIF as well, as well as uh, the Eritrea Network, Citadel Pacific. These are all different companies that are going to be involved with Google. Um, in the expansion, but it's not just Japan, Brendo. It's going to be Guam as well as Hawaii, so that general Pacific area. Yeah, I guess if you want people to use your product, you have to get it to them right? first, right? So good luck for Google. You think? Uh, but no, it's 100% true. Uh, and uh, oh, Google, Google and Amazon, I think they're like these are very, very similar looking situations because. Like you have a stock which is you know cresting at the highs. The difference for Google is it's a recent dip and bounce. So Google did a healthy pullback in which people were able to dip by it. It got the 200 period moving average. So that's what I was waiting for to buy Google. Great, Amazon didn't, Microsoft didn't, is what it is. But now you're getting back up and consolidating off the high for a potential break. The 55 was resistance, the 55 held yesterday, the 55 is the level today. So whether it's this, Amazon on dips, Kind of feel like Amazon was breaking out a little bit more strongly or stronger, whichever way you want to say it. So it, it, that's the one I'm on a bit of right now. But the 55 level, I think, is one to go. And I just I prefer the names that showed you stronger, like higher low type levels for support um, and in that CPI number. Like those are the ones that I want to go to on the dip buy. The ones that are hanging out around the bottom, as I've said, uh, those aren't the ones that are sexy to me. Like, it, the trend is up. I want to buy dips on the ones that have the upward trend. All right, so um, yeah, I'll talk about Google first of all, but first, uh, first and foremost, happy masters to all who celebrate today, the greatest of all time, Mr. T-Dubs right there. So uh, there it is, okay, um, so shout out to that. That's the reason I wore red, no. Some of the records, yeah, some <laughs> of the records uh, that he has is so disgusting, it's Unbreakable. ridiculous, some of the stuff that, that you know, Tiger Woods, at one point, yeah, there's a sticky note, yeah. Uh, Google Log is what I'm going to talk about, 154.50. Tiger Woods, at one point, I think it was the 97 Masters. I'm not 100% sure. Shout out to Gambling Podcast. I'm here for you. We had um, Tiger Woods to win the Masters was minus 110. Just insane. Minus against 88. There was, something, there was something like 80 people in the tournament, and he was minus money. To win, that's like he did not win. No, but that's like but, tennis. Like but, that's what that's what you'd expect back in the heyday of like. That's Federer just so dominant. Jokic. That's in I, golf. I, it shouldn't be like that. Like yeah. it's minus way too one ten. It gets way too open, which is loves. what makes it interesting. Is that anybody can win? Yeah. When you go watch like a you go watch a Grand Slam in tennis, like I have a reasonable expectation as to who is going to be in the final, and like I mean. Federer would be minus 110 a lot. Djokovic would be minus 110 a lot. In, in golf, it's ridiculous. Uh, yeah, he's the champ. Yeah. And he is the... That was what got me into golf, for sure. He's the Microsoft of golf. He is, yeah, he is the everything. Uh, so right now, Google, yeah, I mean, I saw someone said Jack Nicholas. Yeah, okay. I oh. mean, fine, but whatever. He's more mean, like, now yeah, we're getting yeah, into that discussion, so I'm not going to do that. Um, I mean, I will do that, like I said. Let's get some more podcast He's wine. not. Uh, okay, 156.50 right here. Um, that would be real fun to get that level. I'm not sure we want that, though. I'm, gonna, I'm just going to let this market settle down a little bit. I thought that Google, it is the, my number one trade idea today, but when I wrote this sticky note down, it was before PPI, obviously, then that move basically gave that a two bucks straight to the upside. So I, I just wrote down that I liked yesterday. I liked 155, I like 154. I, Google down here to me is a buy and the reason why is pretty simple again. The market's still going higher and what I wrote down on the sticky note was just look at Google, it's still staying up here. Wouldn't be up, okay. Uh, wouldn't be up here if um, this news, like, you know, there's not much news there but it is a catalyst. It's that fiber there in Japan. They've had some good talks lately. I still think Gemini and Apple are going to be something. Um, so I like this move. There's 155.50 is this bottom right there. So that's already something that I like as a breakout level, let alone being able to get a dip buy 
into this level as well. So something back into here. Let's let it settle down. Right now I'm bidding, unfortunately, 155. Like I, that was the bid I put down earlier, like when we wrote the sticky note. I'm going to have to adjust it. Maybe we start this buying at the 200 period at 156. It's going to have to come down a dollar. The market's pretty heated with only five minutes to go. We did miss out on crypto there because we started talking about Boeing. But um, unlike Boeing, crypto is, you know, looking to break some of its highs. It's at 71,000. We talked about how hot it was off that PPI number. It was 69.7, 69.8. It rallied about 1,000 all the way to the upside. Crypto looks pretty strong today. I would say look at ETHE, uh, IBIT, and crypto as a whole because we could test that 73,000 if the NASDAQ you know, is up 1%. Uh, about five minutes to go here. Let's talk Nike. Nice uh, move here so far this morning. About 2% to the upside. Bank of America going to a buy on Nike. And, I mean, you and I were just talking about this. It's an Olympic year coming mm -hmm. up this summer in Paris. Uh, so this note specifically pointing to the amount of apparel that they're going to be coming out with in relation to the Olympics this summer. Yep, they're going to make uh, athletic wear for Canada, China, Kenya, Germany, and Uganda, uh, as well as France, Japan, and Spain for certain uh, clothing lines. Uh, they're going to range between 130 to 160 US dollars, so we'll see what the margins are on those. But yeah, Nike needs a little bit of a boost here, Brendo. Yeah, any uh, ideas here today, guys, for NKE? So I'm... <laughs> I don't know about you, but I wasn't terribly excited about the Nike, uh, the Nike move because of the, I mean, partly of that was the sector it was in. But then you look at the chart, it's like, okay, well, above 9140, that's a breakout. But I just don't like, I don't like a breakout. I, I just, I'm not a huge fan of it, but it looks really good. So uh, what I'm going to pivot to is if it ends up holding bids above 91, I'll just look for, it's more like 91 half actually. If it breaks out this top, I will look for any long that holds that open range. It's just not the one for me today. I mean, Amazon's going to be in play. We didn't get a chance to talk about Robin Hood and, and, and a downgrade, but you can see the resistance. It does look like it's good for a chew through if it can bounce higher. I'm not going to buy it in here. If it gets down 89, that would make a lot of sense to support, but until it gets above 91 and a half, I'm not excited yet. Um, I'm going to quickly, we have three minutes to go here. Robin Hood caught a Citigroup downgrade. It is down already. There we go. Uh, it is down already underneath the resistance level at 18. So if it gets back into here, I would look to fade it. And if it can't, if it gets above 18 half, I think you give it up because then suddenly that's a big reversal into a breakout for Robin Hood. So it's a short into its previous close kind of idea. So we'll let it come in into a strong market and see if we can't fade um, off of these levels from yesterday in the afternoon. 18.5 would be that out. All right. Um, yeah, so I, I have some strong thoughts on Nike. I just think that 89, look, it's been bad since earnings. Um, if you come over here, it is the sticky note there. It's been bad since earnings. The space has been bad. You've seen Lululemon get hit. Um, I, I think it's a decent catalyst. We did, I'm not so worried about the Olympics. I mean, that's a story that's been um, around for hundreds of years, but no. Um, I, I'm, I'm not, I, I more think, I don't know, I thought I wrote, uh, there was the upgrade, but I didn't write it in, oh yeah, there it is, but we also have an upgrade today. So I like the upgrade better, and I said that, oh yeah, by the way, Han Solo says, good luck. Uh, right there, okay. So um, as we go, I just look at, look at what this bottom looks like there, and it, to me, I mean, that's been holding all week. It also holds back here in those October lows. I said there's not too many names that look like this right now that are back to October lows. I think Nike has enough catalysts um, to support that bottom. So we'll, we'll wait to see. I mean, look how dramatically it fell here. It's very, very similar. That's the earnings. Then boom, boom, boom. So some people bought th third day earnings, which wasn't that bad, 92, 93 bucks. That got it up to 94. I think a little bit of action there gets Nike going. So, all right, uh, make sure you hit that watch list and make sure you scan that trade ideas right there and, and you know get the, some of the best charting you can uh, that we use all the time with scanners, screeners, and all that. There's not that much on here at all. It's a pretty mixed board today, buyers and sellers, people asking for my opinion on what the market is. And honestly, today, I... I'm bullish because of the reaction to the market and to that number, but at the same time, I'm going to try to, and I already have bids out. I have bids on Amazon, I have bids on Google, I have bids on Nike, and I have bids on Tesla. And then the one name that we didn't talk about that you mentioned a little bit, I think at the beginning, we talked about some of the chip names. Oh. You mentioned Intel looking short. We have NVIDIA yeah. up near and around that 875. And then I've written down here, and I don't think we get to this, also Bob Along I like. I like AMD short if we can get 
into those same levels. Oops, that's still Nike. I don't know why that didn't switch. Uh, into those same levels that we got yesterday. So if we can get something up here again, 171, 172, then as Russell Wilson once said, I don't know what he says like in coach. Pittsburgh now, but let's ride uh, with AMD up in and around 171 short. What did you even say for steel? He did say something. Let's roll or something. He did say something for Steelers. People in the okay. chat will know, but I don't. He should. He, I don't follow those, Russell Wilson sayings as much as I possibly well, should. Well, it's one of those things that just it'd be up to Wisconsin. It's an easy, easy way for him to just get something meme worthy again, right? Like, why wouldn't you get? He was, he was a Badger, I think. Yeah, he was Wisconsin and, and NC State before he went to Wisconsin, yeah, I think. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but let's get this countdown going on a hump. Oh, wait a minute, Thursday yes. in two and Masters one. Thursday. Masters, Masters Thursday. Masters Thursday is I almost called today Hump Day. You, it is you not pretty Wednesday, much did, Neil. but that's okay. It's, I uh, it, absolutely did. It might as well be Wednesday. I mean, every day seems like it's uh, it all meshes together. Um, okay, so hmm, uh, things that make me go hmm. Uh, nothing right now. The market is uh, just chilling out. We will wait uh, to see if there is an early move. We are bidding um, down here on Google. We could try this 156. We have talked about a pullback in on uh, Google for something to dance with. So 156, let's put that bid in. Although it's at 157, maybe we get a dip. I don't know. Yeah, okay. We'll wait. I've adjusted, I mean, I'm not adjusting anything on Amazon just yet, but uh, that 37.5 turned on Intel right away. I'm going to try and jump on the offer there. NVIDIA just tanked about 6 or $7 at the open, but it was AMD that we didn't talk about. We did mention some things about NVIDIA. Uh, AMD 170 to 171, I would Probably think, is a fade if we get up there. Amazon is... Oh, oh, missed Amazon by a few shekels, pennies there. Looks like he got to the 30s. Yeah, I'm sitting just in front of 186. Okay, if it gets down under the 50s again, I'm going to see if I can't get a little something... Uh, something to wet the proverbial beak. Robin Hood. It looks like Robin Hood didn't do much of anything. Either it's trying to get up yeah. into that 18. I'm looking for 1830 here. for a fill on Robin Hood. So uh, nothing going in Robin Hood just yet. Mm -hmm. uh, Tesla, 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 Tesla. I did get oh, Amazon ripping. one to wet the beak. Tesla's ripping. Tesla is ripping to the upside. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be yeah, patient. Forget with about Tesla. it. Uh, all right. So what's happening to us right now is, and again, remember we said this, and of course it's the only name that I'm in right now, and it looks like it could be um, an early defeat, but we have to wait for 185. I should have just waited for that. You know, some of these dip buys have been pretty good over the last little while. I mean, the good thing is we're learning not to absolutely layer into these things. Uh, but down here at 185 for Amazon would be a much, much better decision than the decision I've made now. Um, so here it comes back in. We will wait. We are still bidding there. We, we had talked about this. Um, so we're, we're still going to wait down in and around 185. But unfortunately, it'll be an HIT hit if it does break because uh, that 184.50, it's just... You know, sometimes you, you got to be a little patient. The market was heated up a bit there this morning. Here's the pushback down. So let's be patient and try to build a decent size here on Amazon, but not until, can't put too much more in until we get back down to 185. Yeah, I got, again, I went to beak, but I got to be patient with it. Intel did give that curl at 50s, uh, 37.50 that is. I got 30, sorry, 45s. It's back at VWAP, which means I should take some out. I've said this before. VWAP doesn't matter as much early in the day, but it was also support in the pre-market at that level. So try to ring the register on the way to what I think is another collision course. Even if the market goes down, the stock is breaking 37 today, but I still think it's on a collision course. Again, with that 30 uh, level. Amazon is back up to the half dollar, so I'm gonna get a little bit out there on Amazon as this. Okay, so it dipped into that pre-market pre breakout price, but then it's running into resistance at VWAP. All right, we'll see what happens. We'll calm ourselves down a little bit as it's just Intel and Amazon, Robinhood, Nothing Burger, Tesla. I mean, Tesla's gonzo, so <laughs> yeah. Uh, probably not getting that Rivian $10 break the no. way Tesla's turning around here. Yeah, we, um, I knew this would happen. We were able to get some out at VWAP, which was pretty good at 40s and 45s, basically in and around 50 for Amazon. So that was good. And we are trying to reload a little bit more down here at 186 just because we've seen this bump up. There we did. We did get that reload. So I'm still going to stay in this name and see if it wants to work out for us or not. Uh, we have some higher offers at Holy this point. Tesla. Apple does dip into the 200 period. We talked 
talked about maybe getting longer if it, if it fell into here. So we made about 50 cents lower until we get into something that I'm gonna be more interested in. But now that I'm already on Amazon, I can get like obsessed with stuff. So let's just wait to see if this one wants to work. I don't wanna just be flipping back and forth all the time. Uh, Google, my dip buys was, wasn't until 155, but we knew this name was gonna go today. We talked about it. I mean, I tried to explain, you know, the levels that I liked and um, it's still going to the upside right there. So nice move, no real dip by opportunities for Google. Let that one settle down for me. The other one to look at is Nike. I said, we really like this long again, up 3%. Uh, wait for a pullback again in this name. So far, kind of a muted open. I mean, I wish we had some more trades. We only have the Amazon long. We have a decent position though. So hopefully it will work out for us. This is the NASDAQ down, up, and rate right where we opened. So here we go. Let's get going a little bit more to the upside here. Um, and then we'll see what happens after this. So for right now, it's a nice move. Uh, maybe Alibaba. What are you in? Still the same? Okay. It's so. just, I'm just the same too, but NVIDIA yeah. just took 880. Alibaba, what did I like? 74.50. NVIDIA took upside? It just, it broke $880. Okay, so the local, I looked, you're through yesterday's levels uh, and the day before that. Now you're looking at 888. Yeah, it's, no, it's 890. 890 was the high uh, on the 8th. So it looks like it's in a collision course Where's with AMD? that. I got to double check AMD here for a second because AMD uh, was weaker and it can't even get back to 170, let alone the 71 resistance level. So AMD still looks like a bit of a dog. Uh, if, if, if we get more of a push there in, uh, in, in NVIDIA, I do think AMD gets dragged up to 71 at the short. Intel is still a dog, whatever. Intel it might be up 0.24, but if you can't tell that that is a stock that is weak, then I've said it before, like, get your eyes checked. Uh, let's go to Adara at the desk. Yeah, this one, Akanda here, AKA, and it's on a penny stock right now, up about 30%. Not seeing any news on this, but lots of excitement over this one on social media, particularly Twitter. Float of about 10 million shares, AKN, guys. AKAN. He needs to check this out. He's probably not. Holy. Oh, ah, uh, you look left, and NVIDIA goes right. Yeah, Some, look, sometimes, sometimes you're looking at exactly the right place, and other times you're looking in the wrong spot. The good news is, I mean, Amazon just dipped down and held, is holding 186, so that feels like it could be a good spot, but that's the name I liked. It's the name that we're into the long, and it's not going to be NVIDIA. I'm just going to double check a few things I haven't checked out, because if ARM is back at, oh, I just have to AMD. I wasn't even thinking. That's hilarious. I went from NVIDIA to AMD out of pure muscle memory. Um, ARM is nowhere I'm near that 128 KD5. level. So if it can't hold, if you don't get up there, there's no fade on ARM. You had to be very patient on the way back up. I'm going to double check Micron as well. Micron's looking pretty strong. Ways away from resistance as well. This is just an NVIDIA story from what I can tell. If it's, if it's able to hold above 875 on a dip, I think it's like a dip and rip. Uh, here on a a NVIDIA, but I'm not chasing the highs. The market's actually- We're a dollar in. Market's cresting right now, if anything. Yeah, we're $2 in the money on an NVIDIA short right now, but the thing is, is that it's just a starter position, and I am like, I'm bidding 878. So well, I'm looking for $4. So this is not like, I'm hoping that we can get a, a push back down here. Hopefully that does happen for us um, on this name. Maybe we, I don't know. Let's just see if we can get it. If we can get $4 to start with, we'll do that. Um, I don't know, uh, my break is gonna be 885. So if it breaks through 885, we're gone. So that's gonna be, like I said, $2 and change, probably slippage, $3 worth of risk right now. So let's see if we can break through. I mean, it doesn't look like it wants to break through, but if it does, we've seen Nvidia make these huge moves and we've seen pullbacks. So let's just see there. I mean, we could keep taking 250. Do we just want to take 250 or should we wait for five? I mean, um, right now, break yourself. Boo, please. Uh, but okay, I don't know. It's funny because I'm long Amazon here, which sucks right now. And we're making up the money, no problem, in NVIDIA. Okay, here we go, let's go. We are short this one right now. NVIDIA coming back in, but stopping there at 879. Um, let's just put a bid, 879.50. If we can get that, we'll be happy with that. 879.40 on a dip down, Oh, too bad. D did not hold. I thought if we broke through 880, we could have, there. Bang, right there as we get that 879.40 level right there. So there's a $3 winner for you put on the board to start.
the day. Hit that three times, and that's what's going on right now. Now it's $4 uh, in the money for NVIDIA. And yo, what's up to everybody out there? What's up to Kevin Mendoza? There it is right here. Nice trade on board for NVIDIA again here today. Thank you for watching. Well done, NVIDIA pulling back in. Uh, I was on the offer of uh, AMD and just said, Man, it's not even going to get up there to 70s. It looks like 169, so afternoon, sorry, morning resistance is going to be the play. I'm out of Amazon and looking for a re-entry. It ran a lower high. So we did, look, we scalped out for the half dollar, but then it ran the lower low, I should say. Uh, so we're out of it. I'm going to get back on the bid at 185 for sure. If 186 can hold again, fine. Uh, Intel, just going to double check. Should be, it's cruising down to the lows, but I haven't taken a second fill out. So I'm going to get one here at the 37.16. So already Intel's challenging that 37 bottom. Looks like it does want to break that low of the day. Bye bye It's a flush. The Nasdaq's actually coming back in, everybody. Like you, well, let's see, yes. Uh, the Nasdaq wicking the top and testing back in. Remember, it's that 18.2, though. If we bounce off that, I get a little bit more bullish. Uh, again on the, on the overall market. It just feels a little bit challenging until you get to test that level to give up on the idea of dip buys and longs just yet. Oh man. Yeah, no, I'm, um, okay, uh, Amazon is going the, so right now we're $5 in the money. I mean, we nailed this Nvidia. Absolutely pump city there on that name, but we're going the other way uh, on Amazon as uh, attention OB, attention Padawan. We need some advice here as Amazon continues to go to the downside, but that's okay. Never fear because Han Solo is here and we will wait and see what happens with Amazon down at 185. Like I have no idea if this is gonna hold. Uh, may the fourth be with you in a couple weeks. Uh, but down here, 185.50. I don't necessarily wanna go to hell and back with this name, um, but we just bought some dips there. So let's see now if it can get back into the upside. Uh, there it is, let's go. Uh, we just take another piece out there at the 200 period, back at 186. So today, once again, Ice Cube fans, is another good day as there it is, $4 in the money now with Nvidia, possibly an out right here, 876. That might be a nice little trade. Um, and then we can see where we go from there, 876.50 or so for um, NVIDIA, we'll see if we can get that. Yes, I know we forgot something. Um, CarMax, miss on earnings, to the downside. Carvana, sympathy play to the downside. It didn't get to 81, which is where I wanted to sit in my note. It was like the last, one of the last things I was looking at of Robin Hood and this. Well, this to this 80 to $81 level, it's already heading back down. I think I want to short the pops there if we even get that chance. Uh, Amazon, I still think, yeah. I'm not, Look, I'm not of the opinion that Amazon, that Amazon is dead just yet. But it did show you that downward trajectory. I'm still looking for the 185. That was the initial level that I wanted in the first place. So if it's going to give me that, I'm sitting there waiting for it. But now you're getting another higher low worth taking a shot at the 86 level. Oh, oh. Apple was the other thing to get to. Apple, higher low holding VWAP on Apple. So maybe it doesn't want that low of the day. And Apple's got a little bit more strength in it uh, as we speak. Intel's bouncing. I will probably reload that short. I still feel good about the Intel short, even though I'm not done looking for longs on some of the bigger cap tech names. All right, guys. Um, it's been, once again, another, another big day. And we only have two trades on. So, um, But we're going to wait to see if Amazon can finally do something to itself here um, and start to go back up to the upside. So we're long right now at 186.03. We've taken hits on it because we've been legging it out. Uh, but we still have on pretty much our full position here uh, heading into what you know may or may not be a, a run we'll see uh let's see if it does go but we like this name and we're gonna we're, we're willing to give it a shot here so that's gonna be amazon against uh basically 186.50 we talked about that we like that level i like that level 186 sorry 185.50 that was that most recent dip buy opportunity that we took right there so we're gonna do that again um if if we can but here comes nvidia hopefully we can get that 876 print that would be pretty nice but we're still under vwap maybe we really dump out here I, um, hmm, do you guys want to ride with this? Uh, all right, I'm going to cancel 876. I mean, maybe, uh, all right, I'm just, uh, life of a trader, baby. Uh, we go through these decisions all the time. Um, all right, so I, I, I'm, I just pulled it. If we're going to stay underneath, maybe Amazon, maybe. Bitcoin's tanking. Bitcoin's tanking, okay, that. 
that doesn't. It's back through 70,000. 70, okay, yeah, 70,000 just went on Bitcoin. That might be something. Uh, if it that, pops, so 70 and 70,000 and 40 dollars on iBid are very, very adjacent to each other. So if this pops back in, I'd look to fade that. Coinbase was nowhere near anything that I wanted There's to trade. There's 876. So I don't think we're going to have that. But you're getting a big reversal in BTC, which was really, really strong yesterday. Uh, we'll see what happens there. Yeah, there's that 69.8 uh, we're sitting at. So I'm looking to short the pop, but it's got to be the 40 level on IBIT. I'm not trading, I'm not going to trade Bitcoin directly. All right, with the $6 winner again, guys, today the leaderboard is littered one more time. $7 now in the money, boys and girls, uh, with this trade here for NVIDIA. Um, so we are short uh, NVIDIA, and it's just... Just like Chef Joe said, um, you can go both ways. And on that note, I congratulate Mr. Max. But we are right now short NVIDIA, $7 in the money right now for NVIDIA. And oops, Brittany, we did it again uh, temporarily. It's 9.45 uh, right now. But I'm just showing you guys that it is possible to be who you want to be and make the trades. You just got to put them on and trust what you're doing. And there it is. It is a nice one there. A little bit of a face slapper uh, action happening on NVIDIA as we come back in. I'm feeling like 872. Um, we, I mean, we could get greedy. I don't know. We celebrate because it goes in the money for us. And whenever you have an eight, nine, ten dollar winner, you probably should be celebrating. So 872.50. Let's see if we can get that. We'll put that bid out there and see if we can put something special on the board immediately here today. 22 cents in the money. We only have two trades. 20 cents, 25 cents in the money on Amazon, $7 in the money on NVIDIA. So, I mean, so far, so good. Needless to say, I hope you're enjoying the show. Hit the like, hit the subscribe. And if you hit it about 500 times, Sharif will grow a beard back. I seriously doubt he will, but uh, we can no. all hope that it'll happen. I'm, I'm in the process of paying for locates on Nikola here, as Nikola just dropped 11%. To the downside. I don't know if there's anything specific with them or it's just the fact that Nikola is Nikola, which is entirely possible um, because they just kind of stink and that, that would be a reason of. It's back underneath the dollar. I am going to be shorting a pop. Just another addition. 186 got back in on Amazon, so I uh, have to hit. I always forget you have to double authenticate. Not authenticate, but you have to actually say yes and then say yes again to get the locate. Oh, so, for yeah. what stock are you doing? It's that? Nikola. Oh, There's Nikola. so many times that I've done it and then I forget to say, are you, it goes, are you sure? And then I don't. And then I think I have the locates and I That don't. is the worst, actually. It's frustrating. It's not so I got them now. I got back into 86s on Amazon and it just hit 86.4 and reversed another time. So if this isn't an, a stair step up at this point, then I should wait patiently for that 185. But I'm giving the 186 level a chance. This is the second, the third time that we'll be in it. Uh, as mentioned, Nicola breaking to the downside here, looking nasty. VWAP's at 90 cents. First available pop is what I'm going to look to short. It's now SSR, but this is not like Tilray. I'm not looking to go long this one on an SSR bounce. Under a dollar, failing a dollar, I think it's more of a fade than anything else. Yeah, nice. Oh, Robin, oh uh, Robin Hood. I What's just barely missed this top on Robinhood when we were getting the Intel short. It got up to 30. I was at 35. So we might have missed our chance. I'll have to see it retest this level to try and get this again. Maybe wet the beak in the, in the high 20s, somewhere in here. I'm giving it to 1850, and that's if we get the fill. It's a matter of being patient. Intel's still bouncing about halfway. We risked about seven cents because there's going to be, well, maybe six cents on slippage, but it's bouncing so far off the $37 level. So a good chance that it retests that if the market wants to continue to give it up. But uh, taking profit in front of 37, that's a big bottom that it had yesterday at that price. Amazon right back at 186 even. So it's been put under pressure here, Amazon. And Rivian is not through yet, I don't believe. And if it is through $10, that would mean I missed. I did miss this, Phil. Hey, that's me. Hey, look at Neil. What? It's at 10 now? Neil missed it by four cents. But the 10 break is probably going to happen. Oh, uh, when yeah. it does, I'm so hopefully going to be getting like 9.99 or 9.98. Uh, should get one of those two prices. Again, guys, two positions today. So far, so good. Great. I mean, Intel short. I mean, we've been, we've been nailing um, some of these chip names over the last couple of days. So, I mean, I think you just want to stick in the pocket there um, and stay with... Uh, what's been working, man, and that's been shorting these chip names. Um, just like that, we are seven in the money now with NVIDIA. I do have a bid here, though. At, um, you know what? This market's... All right, forget it. No more bids. Uh, let's see how we can go, man. We're $8. I mean, can I... I 
you know, owe me like eight dollars in the money. I mean, we we we've had some big winners before on this show. There's there's absolutely no doubt about this. Uh, but I'm just thinking to myself right now, um, which can be dangerous, that's for sure. But is like we're underneath. Uh, the 50 period, we're heading towards VWAP. So, okay, are, are we going to test that VWAP on the market? And if we do, then where, where is NVIDIA at that time? So uh, I said to Adara yesterday, and, um, and again, thanks Adara for, for all, you know, the kind words as well, but it's just like, if you're gonna look at something, you gotta look at something. And if we're underneath the 50 period right here, generally speaking, I tend to, think the market has a chance to fade into VWAP when we're under that. But the problem with today's market is, and this is why I'm going back and forth, which is still now almost an $8, almost a $9 winner now, as we get spicier here, is there's not much happening in the market today. So, you know, a pull back down in would be nice, but at the same Rivian time, broke. Uh, Rivian broke. I could still see it getting up to 18,270 as well. So let's just sit here. We can see NVIDIA right now. We are that $8 in, $7 in the money, but that could change very, very fast. But look at Amazon, guys. This one's starting to go. Amazon finally off of some of those dip buys, but still not really making any money on it. So uh, we'll have to wait for Amazon to do something. The, look, the NASDAQ just held 18 too. So for anything that yeah, follows you know the market, what? I mean, I think that's a good sign for any of the, you know, like your mag Seb names that still look strong. I haven't looked at Google, so apologies there. Um, Apple was looking relatively strong. And Rivian broke. I got 98s. So was going to get 98s or 99s because, you know, the spread is always one cent and the volume's fantastic. The best fill on the way out was 88s in there. I got some 90s. Now that it made that first push down, 10 cents. I took, I always try to take out the bulk on the first, not, well, the bulk on the second move. Some on the first move, a little bit more in the second move. I want 975, and then I pass that, I only want to be holding like a 10% after that because it's a very tight stop in here. You're only risking a few cents on a trade like this, so I want to have that tight in, tight out. If I reload, then it's got to be failing underneath 10 again or something up here at 10.15. That should be two separate trades. So Amazon heading to the upside. So far, so good. I mean, everything has worked out pretty much just fine. Intel is at that low of the day, the $37 level. If it continues to bounce there, I might just have to cover all of Intel. It just 37 was a hard bottom uh, yesterday. If it bounces strongly, I might just have to get out of this and reshort it at VWAP. And it is almost dollar uh, club levels again. What's up? Is that Randy back there? Randy was here a second ago. What's up, Randy, if and when you come back? Uh, but there it is right now. Amazon now 90 cents in the money. Oh, actually, we just got that 60 level. So we just get that fill right there on Amazon. So again, a trade that I say all the time, believe in what you're doing and you shall be rewarded. Um, and then look what's happening right here as well. NVIDIA, we are bidding 174.50. Um, I'm going to potentially take that fill. I don't know. Do we want that fill? I mean, I think we should probably take that. I mean, if we get back into there, we get back into there. It's been bouncing off of here. We have a monster winner on Amazon. Um, so I'm pretty happy. We have one, and this is what I talk about this, is that you can trade completely opposite of the person beside you, of your sticky note, of anything. It's all about trading the plan. Neil mentioned Intel. We like that short. He looked at the Rivian break. Um, and here's the Amazon long that we like and the Nvidia short that we like. So, I mean, we're making money long and short here all over the place. But let's go over to Adair and see what she's up to. Getting some comments here from Fed's Barkin saying that the latest inflation data didn't increase confidence that disinflation is spreading in the economy and saying that inflation data looks the same as it did at the end of 2023, basically highlighting that we have goods prices falling and a shelter moving sideways while services are increasing. So not a lot of confidence here um, in the in disinflation coming from Fed's Barkin, guys. The end of that. Right. I don't know if we're there discussing. was my cut. That's the. Oh, I never didn't... mind. I just disconnected. Anyways, uh, I don't know. Was it there? No, no, my earpiece just disconnected again. Oh, okay, so, okay, uh, okay, okay, okay. I'm never crap. sure. Uh, so what just happened? Uh, you already mentioned Amazon going. Amazon. Oh, that's what well. Rivian. Wow. Sorry, I was just looking at Coinbase. Amazon, Rivian just got to the 90, 85 level. So as I said, I want like I want to have 10 percent on if it gets to 75. So I have one bid out in front of that, and then hopefully we'll get that tagged. Maybe there's a lower high to play off. Don't know why I'm looking at the 15 minute chart. It's really not gonna matter that much. It just bounced off 82 is exactly where my bid is. Uh, so Amazon, 
Again, it just, it's above VWAP. I want that high of the day, but it just did this little bit of a wick. Like it was about to turn into 187, and then you saw that wick bottom or wick top start to pull back. So I want it holding VWAP. That looks a heck of a lot more exciting if it can. iBit never, uh, I'm assuming we never broke, we must not have broken back above 70,000. Almost. It's consolidating but it's not really flying back into the 70,000. Usually when you get a level break like that, I've noticed on Bitcoin, you get like a retest of the level, but that hasn't happened just yet. So I'm gonna cancel my offer for now and maybe come back to that a little bit later. Coinbase, I said if it was anywhere, if it had been near a resistance level, like the, two, the 254 or something like that, I probably would have shorted it when I saw that 70,000, but it wasn't, so we're not gonna just madly rush into it. Bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you, bless you all over the place. Uh, all right, um, hmm. so Bonus. are we interested? Yes, we are. Uh, we are interested now because we're into a brand new position, so let's just go another one for another now. It's just one. another position. I don't know if this another one's gonna one. win or not. Uh, but one. it is Tesla, and we just take it out right there for a little bit of a win there. So, so far, so good. So far, so good. I don't know, maybe we should uh, look at some so far here. But there's Tesla right now. 30 cents in the money, floss it off for another one uh, right there on that dip buy. And again, brought to you by me just talking stuff on the sticky note again. We wrote down Tesla, 170 on the sticky note and slap it up BPI because there it is, another one. There's 70 cents now in the money on Tesla. And let's see, here we go. Let's get out at 74 if we can, if we can get 75 cents on that one. It's a clean trade there on Tesla. My bad, we're long at 170.25s. Uh, there it is, we got out at 170.75 there. Um, I thought we had a little bit of a lower bid, but that's so far so good as Tesla makes that move back up. So quickly in and out there of Tesla, still have 60% of the trade. NVIDIA is the one that's been a little bit of a, a fun uh, trade today because now it's starting to go back up to the upside. I'm deep. still sitting down here, see if we can get that bid. We talked about it. We said uh, all this stupid Russell Wilson stuff about let's ride and all this stuff. So we're gonna sit here and see what happens with NVIDIA. Um, we are absolutely a print factory uh, so far on Amazon, which we saw that Ed, uh, Jaffe news, Jassy, sorry, news there that came through, looking on AI, trying to build that even bigger and better than it already is for them. They have a stake in Anthropic. They just dropped 2.7 more billion dollars into that one. I like, I like a lot for Amazon. So for your bouncing off right now, the 50 period moving average. So let's just, again, not be too stubborn there and take another damn out uh, right now as nothing can go into the gates of hell apparently today. And we'll just wait to see what a dare. Well, uh, yeah, let's go to it. You don't we'll have go to there. Let's yeah. go to it. Yeah, so Neil's earpiece is whack. So let's go to a dare and then we'll come back and see what Neil's all about. Nice look here for Fiverr, F-V-R-R. -R. This one trading up about 10% right now. A company's board authorized $100 million share repurchase program. So F-V-R-R -R on watch here, guys. Okay. Um, I wanna, the I thing, thing that can go together. to the gates of hell. Uh, that the gates of hell. A, Rivian can go to the gates of hell. B, Intel can go to the gates of hell. Uh, C, Nikola hopefully can return to the gates of hell because it just got yeah. the VWAP in 88. Look. I said I wanted to short it back into this resistance spot, so I just wet the beak and VWAP there. It'll be 88 even that I actually got, so no need to worry about like fractions of prices. But this, I want to give it some space. I think it's, it could be multiple swings. Once it's on the downswing, I think I feel a little bit better about it. The problem with only getting filled as it's coming down is it's short sell restricted because it went over 10% of the downside. So some aspect of getting into this trade is also going to be shorting pops. Uh, so with that out of the way, uh, just going to get over to AMD because going back if you're up. back above, this is AMD versus NVIDIA. So you're breaking view up, getting to this high. You never had a top break. It couldn't even take 169. So if I see any resistance here, I just feel the AMD short a little bit more from a relative strength and weakness uh, aspect, let's just call it. So here comes AMD into that high, 169. 168.95 is a high, so basically it's 169 even. I'm going to have my stop ready to go just a little bit above that. So before it even gets there, I am covered. But I want to be shorting into this pop on advanced micro devices. I just see some relative weakness in that name. Intel's just chilling out at those lows. The new position was in Nikola for me. Other than that, nothing has changed. 86 is holding great on Amazon. For now, I want to see it take that 87. Don't really have anything else on the long side. Google's nowhere, I mean, Google's nowhere near 55. I think you almost have to adjust 
if it's going to go like this, stair step up, or maybe back into previous resistance levels, like 156 and a half could be a level for Google, but that's what we have to think on the fly. If it doesn't give you the dip and it's going to be trend up, you've got to adjust your plan, right? It doesn't mean you don't want the long, it just means you have to be long at a different price. There's no way around it. So, so Fed's barking coming at 10 o'clock, which is Barking now. is going to be barking. Um, probably. These guys should shut their damn mouths half the time, I feel like. Uh, but um, again, so. Imagine they only spoke outside of market hours. I don't have a problem. I, 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 my whole thing is, is like you get one from one person, one from another person, and then at the end of the day as a day trader, you're sitting there and you're wondering like, you know, what direction am I going in? Because this guy will say, oh, I don't think we're going to cut rates this year. Uh, and then the next thing you know, uh, the market tanks, you know, 150 points. And then 30 minutes later, you can say somebody else comes. No, no. I'm, I'm you just, can say Kashkari. You could uh, No, no, no. I'm, you I, can don't say care who, I don't care who speaks. I'm not, you know. It was Neil Kashkari, the one that did it last week. Oh, yeah. But remember, I think that was geopolitical. I don't have it. I know. But, I know. but anyways, the idea behind all of it is, is that. shade on this guy. <laughs> I know. Because, no, no, I know. And we don't like Neil Kashkari. Obviously, we misspelled the name what and everything spell, bro? like that. So we, we get it, bro? we get it, we get it, all right. Well, I see you're still bitter about Stefan Diggs, I feel like. Yo, you good. know, because ever since then, we've been really like, you know, leveling up our hate game, I think. I'm, yeah, I'm, taking, I'm taking a minute off. I don't I think, think anything's wrong with that. I'm taking some minutes yeah, off. Yeah, I mean, bills that's, right now. you know, pro bowler, wide receiver. Well, last but time I, I told you not to bring up the bills on the show because I didn't want to have to think about it while we're at work. Oh. But, um, okay, my bad. But, yeah. Okay, let's bring it to the, I mean, Josh Allen is nice. I think Josh Allen's fun. All right, let's go over the desk. We're right here on uh, the SPY, following me at a high and following a little bit here on this 15-minute chart for the S&P 500. Um, some things to be aware of as well. We did get the PPI print earlier. Month over month actually coming in slightly lower than expected. So 0.2% versus 0.3% for the month of March for um, the PPI number. Other things to keep an eye on right now, we did have Bitcoin earlier pulling up above that 70,000, so Bitcoin be, could be strong. Fed's Barkin speaking and basically saying that this newest inflation data has not instilled them with a lot of confidence, so a lot of things coming from the Fed uh, has to be expected. We have some more Fed speakers this afternoon as well to keep an eye on uh, heading into the rest of the day. Other stocks to watch here as well. We have Robinhood now trying to get... Uh, positive here, initially trading down on a downgrade, downgrade to sell, but a price target increase from Citigroup. We also have Nike here, another analyst move, this one at getting an upgrade from BVA Securities and a price target increase. Last but not least, Google falling down here a little bit, but initially up almost 1% after investing $1 billion in cables to strengthen the connectivity between the US and Japan. So lots of interesting catalysts moving this market today, guys. Uh, okay, Tesla, thanks uh, for that. Okay, what's flushing all oh, the market? Yeah. No, uh, no, Rivian. Rivian down five percent yeah. now. So eventually, this this silly thing was gonna break ten dollars. You don't know, look, you don't know when it's gonna happen. You t I, I st three separate days we stared at this and watched it bounce off ten without actually going long at ten dollars. And obviously, if you had been going long off ten dollars, it's already been good. So I just got the print at nine seventy five even, and it continues to head to said downside. Whoa, okay, well not everything's going down because I just got short AMD. Short AMD, huh? Yeah, AMD and 169 apparently are having a bit of a thing. So, if this can't hold this top, then uh, we'll put an L on the board. But it hasn't happened just yet, but that was as the market was breaking back to the downside and every single short I was in looked good and Amazon was getting back to the 186 and exactly that moment AMD uh, came in there. I'm looking up. Okay, Nvidia's kind of chilling. What just uh, happened? Uh, no, I was gonna say. So Tesla goes from winner to a loser real quick right there. So we'll fail on that oh, one. Oh no, one. Uh, because it we didn't lose that much on it, but it did fall. Uh, broke 170. We tried it again at 170. Out at 169.50. I mean, we we have to trade it like that. And we've talked about this. Not like saying, okay, let's get back in, let's get back in. So let's just do a little bit of work here. We know we like the long on Tesla. At least we thought we did. But now look what's happening. Market down, Tesla down one and a half now as the market not down, but starting to get to VWAP. And just remember what, what I said again. If the market was under the 50 period, we thought there was a chance to get to VWAP. So let's just see 
if that continues to sort of reign true here, but we could potentially buy some dips there. We still are waiting for NVIDIA. It did get nicely cooked uh, up into that upside again, and that would have been you know, potentially a spot where we should have been thinking uh, coulda, woulda, shoulda about getting out of that one. Um, when, we, when we sort of made that move back into 874, 875, we really did um, sort of look to gift horse a little bit in the mouth there. Um, but again, 876 looking like a decent spot to get out of that one. Amazon, still a dollar club and Tesla's out. So I'm probably just gonna let Tesla breathe. I didn't, when I just zoomed out there, I didn't really see anything that I liked until maybe here, which is 168.50. So I AMD's just, now flying. Is by it? The way. Okay. What are you thinking? Well, well, I'm out of AMD. I'm thinking I got the heck out of Dodge, is yeah, what I'm that's thinking. That's what I did there. Too. I gave up on. Oh, that wow. Short, NVIDIA's flying. Like the Bills gave up on their number go. one wide receiver. See, but there then, we go. See, now you're in better spirits. There we go. That's yeah, fine. Yeah, it is what it is. It, it, Sometimes you just deal with our demons. I get demon, emotional you know? about the Bills. I get, I'm one of those people. Like, I probably get weight. I don't get emotional in training. I actually get really emotional. Like, I, when the Jays blew that. That was uh, bad, yeah. That extra inning game yesterday, I wasn't very cool with it. Uh, 170 and 171 I want to wait for. So let's be patient, which I don't know that I was patient enough there. I could have been short at 80s instead of 50s, and then that would have been half the loss, which you can, it happens from time to time. So we were a little bit impatient there. Uh, just to jump back over to, like, Tesla underneath 170, I've got to ask myself why... Like, in my note this morning, I was like, 170 is your litmus test, and Ready. you sort of play off it. Yet, I'm, yet I didn't short the break. So on the way back up, I got to feel like it, a fade back into 171 makes some sense on Tesla, if it's going to be this week. So I'm going to play it that way, a fade back into one. If it breaks 170, just short it into 171. VWAP's adjacent to that. Uh, the move up on AMD does give us a chance to fade into Intel, potentially at this halfway marker at 3730, if we curl here, or maybe back under VWAP, or just back at 37.5. So any or, yeah, either one of those things can be a good setup for me. Nikola is, I mean, it's, I was trying to get more on the way down. See, when it's SSR, when it's going up, you can just sit on the offer. When it's going down, you can't hit the bid. So I did not add to any Nikola because it went down and I didn't get it. So I have to sit on the offer and hope to collect more at 88 as it's starting to head down. But I didn't even get, I got a fraction of what we were trying to get, but that's the problem with short sell restricted if you don't get the move uh, early on the way back up. What about? Uh, I'm not really, I mean, I'm not really doing too much here. I was, I was really close to getting want to look at the more arm. Nvidia up there. And I was like, eh, let's be a little more patient. So. Um, just to tell you, I should have got, got more there. I'm waiting at 884.30 and 883 flat. So for some reason, it bounced off. It went to 883 basically flat, and it just didn't fill us. That's pretty stupid for me to wait at a flat level, so I definitely acknowledge that. Um, but again, we were waiting there. I just thought, okay, we're going to get it and I didn't want to like go away from sort of the plan of action there. So that was an opportunity there for sure um, on that one and we missed it. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'll tell you that we missed that trade um, on another reload short there. So Nvidia was a mistake not getting that. We are still gonna wait for that level though, as we discussed on Tesla 168.50. I was looking at Qualcomm for some reason here. Uh, it showed up on a scanner. Uh, that we were near that day's high again. We just made that high of 172.70 despite the market heading to the downside. This was a name that I was looking at because I like big tech names and I obviously was wondering what we were doing with this name as we were up here at 172.50. So this could fade out as well if, if you want to play this against 173. I'm not sure if there's news about Qualcomm, but it's at this 50 period moving average right now. And this could be a good short here for Qualcomm if you like that setup. So that's something definitely, definitely to look at if you like it. I'm going to take another piece out here on Amazon. Um, actually, no, no, we don't need to do that. Let's wait for Amazon now. Uh, if it pulls back, we still like to get this level again. So let's bid one more time at 185.50. Look at this market. Here we come back in yeah, again. So it is kind of doing what we thought it would do. Um, and that was fade. Uh, off into VWAP. So that's what's happening right now. I like the look here. Let's just see if it will hold. But for now, we get back into VWAP and we wait for NVIDIA to fall into 874 again. I was, I was going to say you want to look at ARM. Uh, yeah, or maybe you, like, maybe you don't want to look uh, at ARM because ARM went exactly, I mean, exactly to the last two days resistance level. And it's not even close. And I'm looking over at AMD, trying to short the same high. And it's like, okay, if that doesn't work, I should... 
I won't take a third swing there. I should just be shorting Arm off this level. If Arm breaks 128, that's it. Like, forget about it. Like, it's pretty obvious. But as long as it holds this 127 half, I mean, give me a break. Three days in a row, the exact same resistance level, and each time it's bounced down to 125-ish. That's two and a half bucks if you're going to get it. Uh, just to give you an update on Rivian, I'm going to hang on to the last bit to 250 or right back into break even because we scalped this breakdown trade pretty much as, as much as we're going to. The only long on the board right now is Amazon. And I'm looking at, like, I keep missing Robinhood up here because it just doesn't want to get to the top end of the range. But as the market's going dipsy deal, like this is putting in some higher lows. I feel like either it breaks 18 to the downside or just let it track back up until like 18.35. So again, just have to be a little bit patient there. Intel is getting very close to let's put it on for a reload. As a matter of fact, yeah, it's right at that spot, 37.30. I might wet the beacon here if it gets into the high 30s for Intel. Amazon's still chilling, still looking okay. I feel like there's a stock that I was missing we were going to be talking about. Oh, yeah, it's... It was what Bitcoin. Was it Intel? Oh, Bitcoin. No, it was Bitcoin and that 40 level. So ah, there was a retracement right into VWAP. Whose job is it to remind me of the things that I'm forgetting? Yeah, I'm getting old. Uh, it goes right into VWAP, wicks VWAP, and then pulls back down in. Ooh, that was probably a really good trade. But uh, maybe it'll put a lower high in there. I'm looking over. You're still above 70,000, 70,016. Mm. So maybe I'll back off that, because that would have been the trade right here off of VWAP. VWAP or Trace, okay. for short. But if it's over 70,000, I don't know that I want the second short after we miss the first. That's a shame. So the Qualcomm, I mean, the Qualcomm trade is what it is. We're not in that Qualcomm. rate yet. Um, I was just looking at it. It's 173. I was debating that one. I'm also debating. I mean, hopefully this market will fall back in a little bit here, but NVIDIA is trying to get back in. And again, just talking about the same names, but uh, this is the name that I'm really focused on right now. Tesla's still at that bottom. What else you guys want to look at? I was always looking at Disney recently here. It's 1010, by the way. I want to thank everybody uh, for joining us on, and I'll hit this for now, a green market day. Um, Disney, again, pulls into the 200 and now is getting lower. So, I mean, this name, really great, up to that 118. We've sort of talked about 118 again, but look at Disney barcoding as uh, we taught Brian Shannon that. And right now, 118 to 117, just going back and forth. I would say we got a nice little top there of 119 for Disney. Looking to get short on that if we can get that may, uh, name back in a little bit for DIS. We were lucky enough to have Amazon again uh, come in and give us that 50 period at 30, but we are falling back in. All right, it's a $5 winner right now. Let's go. Um, all right, you know what? Uh, uh, I'm about to cancel this NVIDIA because we are underneath VWAP right now. But that seems like a very, very dangerous play for me. So um, let's just get out of everything here. Let's get out of Amazon. All right, that's that. Obviously a positive name there. We'll put that on the board and spend the money for Amazon. But let's get out of everything. I'm going to cancel all of my bids right now, um, even on NVIDIA. I am not feeling this market right now. So I'm going to cancel all of this. We are starting to head to the short side. I would say bears unite. I think it's time. Yeah, I don't disagree with that. I just reloaded Intel, but I did get, for the first time today, I did just get Alphabet off of the support level. I said I would give it 156 uh, half, so I got in 156.65. We'll see if it can bounce in. VWAP's like 60 cents higher, so there is that chance this can get into VWAP, but it's the first trade. We were already dip buying Amazon, which might have even been a bad out there. Like I just, I just got out of Amazon and, and into this one, looking a little bit uh, more of a normal setup for me in there. But Amazon, I realize, look, it's putting in higher lows, but it was also putting in lower highs. And if that's the case, when it puts in a lower high, I've said this before, my general rule of execution, after the lower high, your reload should be, if you're doing it, it should be at the low. Not assuming a higher low, I should be waiting in a downward channel for the actual best price, which I didn't do. So therefore, get out of the trade. You know, so I got out of the trade. It was a reload that violated the rules that I liked. Um, Google, if it bounces 57, I take some out. If it gets to VWAP, I take more out as well. Something else I wanted to get to. Oh, yeah, it was Intel. Made a little bit yes, of a curl please. here. Yes, please, uh, Randy. Thank you. Uh, Intel, lower high, got the reload, looking for this to get back into said low of the day. And yeah, Rivian's very, very close now to that 950 could, level. Could anybody tell that you and I wanted coffee? We both said yes, please, like at the exact same time. Yeah. Uh, there, shout out oh. to Randy who was running the board there. You need your trading thing. juice. Uh, so, all right, back over. 
to the desk, I believe, for a dare-up. Some comments there coming out from Feds Williams to keep an eye on here, saying that there's no need to change the monetary policy in the very near term, but eventually, uh, that's his word here, eventually they will need to cut rates, saying that they're not really considering a rate hike, though. So but some mixed sentiments coming out here from Feds Williams, guys. I mean, it wasn't at Barkin for it. That's why I was saying, I know we're hating on uh, Mr. Kashkari there, but... Uh, um, and now we get Williams coming through. It's just going to be like back and forth. Uh, parade of these it's, jokers. That's how um, they do it. All right, so GameStop right now. Okay, not moving. I uh, just got an alert. GameStop. Sorry, my bad. No, it's, not, it's not doing anything. I'll call it up. It was just at VWAP, but it's at VWAP because it's the VWAP is not doing anything. Uh, see? So, um, all right. I just, anything that hits on a scanner, especially if we're kind of talking about the same names over and over again, I'm going to try to bring it to your attention because uh, I'll look at those. But GameStop, nah, not, nothing for me right now. My bad uh, on the GME call out. I can't remember the last time. GameStop, I remember looking at it. AMC is the one I don't remember. We haven't you looked guys at that in a while. Yeah. But uh, we can be bearish on other things too, not sure. just GameStop and AMC. Although, you know what? The last time I traded AMC, I actually think I was long a few months ago. Um, it was just a momentum trade. Set 950 just hit on Rivian, so 10 to 950. I basically just held on for the dream the last 10% into the 950 level, 975 to 950. It actually is accelerating. SSR is going to be at $9 and about, how what is that going to work out, to 24 cents. So if it gets to the quarter, it's 10% down. I'd be looking for an SSR bounce at some point in this stock. If it does pull back into VWAP before there's an SSR bounce, I might short that. Yeah, it looks like I'm, I, don't know, I feel like if I get more, uh, of this Nikola, I might not actually want it the way that it's trading. Seven so I'm going to take some out here at that 86 level, see if we can't uh, get back in the low of the day. There. So again, the first two shorts we put on was Rivian through 10. You're risking on a break. We're tagging. About it, you risk 10 or three, two or three cents, and you're absolutely laughing. We are oh yeah, the other thing was right Intel. Going to get bids right back into the low of the day. It's been a brick wall at 37 even. So even though it's in the money, got to make sure we're taking profit as if it's been holding that level the entire time through the shorts have been paying this AM. Yeah, I have no idea what's happening here, but we are starting to get to the downside. I want to look at Marvell, and that's why I said attention to Dara. There's something happening with Marvell right now. Um, that is MRVL, Dara. It's down 73. It's down like uh -oh. five bucks here almost immediately, and it is sending shock waves. That's probably too dramatic, but it, it, it's sending waves here. Uh, as there it goes, bang, yes, sir. Spin it for your boy one more time. It's $8 in the money now for... NVIDIA, there it is right now. Look at NVIDIA down to the downside right now. 872, let's go. Can we get 872 back into the 200 period? Moving average for NVIDIA. We'll see if we can get that one. Let's go over to Adara. Tell me what's going on with Marvell. But, and should we get out at 873? Let's go find out what Adara's up to and then we'll decide about that. Yeah, interesting note here. We have, um, I guess, an, a Marvell executive saying at an event, they see AI revenue this year almost tripling to over $1.5 billion. So it could be a sell the news reaction just to repeat the story. An executive at Marvell Technology, MRVL, saying that they see AI revenue this year almost tripling to over $1.5 billion. I'm going to see if there's any other notes coming out there, but it looks like they're having an event right now. So this could be an ongoing story, guys. Single break then, because that's obviously not necessarily bad news. I'm like, maybe I should put a bid on NVIDIA then. Like, I'm here thinking like, oh my God, this is horrible news. And then they're talking about doubling, tripling. But remember what we talked about? Thank you, um, Thanks, Randy. Randy? Uh, remember what we talked about when you think about expectations on stocks? And that is, is that, thanks, Randy, is that you get um, push and pull there. So I feel like some of these chip names... They're going, their earnings are going to be great. We saw that from Taiwan Semi. It's just, what will the guide be? So I'm yeah. not sure if that guide for Marvell there is, although it's a great number, were they maybe expecting, and I, I apologize, I didn't exactly hear the number. I was trying to think about it. Um, let's just say they, want, they got $2 billion in sales or whatever the number was. Oh, maybe they're expecting $3 billion. So like, I don't really know, but that's a nice move down for Marvell, hitting the 50 period. Let's do what we always do, man, and try to trade this price action first and then ask questions later. So we are uh, doing that right here with NVIDIA. Uh, I just put a bid at 872. Probably should have stuck there at 874. And if we had done that and, again, stuck to our grind, then I think we would have been okay, but we didn't do that.
that we violated uh, our rules there. So let's put another bid. We were at 874 and I canceled it. That's the ridiculous part about it. So let's just go back there. We'll cancel, like, and I went to 872. Can you believe that? It's like not even that much of a difference. So we just, we screwed that one up. So I, I, um, I'm, I'm here for that, my bad. So I, well, I got out and it might be a bad out on Google, but we'll see. I just feel like the market rolled through support and it broke the, I'm um, buying dips and it broke the local bottom. So just get out of the trade and wait for the next opportunity. Maybe we get some higher lows. Maybe we get some kind of a curl. I have no idea. The Marvell, I, part of me, like a very small part of me was like, hey, why not just go long when that sounded like it was good news? Right. But then I, when, you zoom, when I zoomed out of this thing, like, okay, it, some of it might have just been a little bit of a technical break, which if I, was, if I wasn't paying, if it wasn't news, if it was nothing else, I'd say that's a flat bottom break, right? Like 70 and a half, and maybe that's something it had to do with. So going long into this potential resistance spot, I don't know that I love so, it. So if it gets back into that flat bottom, I'm almost thinking, right. like, why wouldn't I short it? So Neil doesn't have his earpiece in, but um, we, we're going to go to Adair. I just want to say there is a conference. There is a conference happening where Marvell is speaking. So oh, let's off. just go over to Adair. She has something else. Yeah, hands off. Yeah, I was going to say that. So that there is this ongoing AI era event being hosted by Marvell right now. It's going to be from 10 a.m. So we just started about 20 minutes ago to 12 p.m. Eastern time. So just be aware this event is ongoing uh, today for those two hours. If I see any other news headlines coming from this, I will let you guys know. All right. Carvana. Thanks oh for that, Adair. And that's why, I mean, I just wanted to highlight something. We are sponsored by the Benzinga Pro platform. So why I have that news first, um, well, we, we all have it together, but it's like I can hear it in there, and then I'll flip over to the stock, I'll look at it, and then we'll get Adara's uh, reaction as she'll you know, sift through the news and make sure that we give you guys the right stories. And there it is right there. Marvell Technology sees executives 30% uh, of total revenue for AI. So that's what I'm saying. Like, what number, what were they expecting, right? And so... Is that a higher number or a lower number? Those of you that trade Marvell, uh, this is the day for you because maybe you'll know a little bit more about this. And then now I get it in my ear now again. It's nothing happening. It's just like Feds Williams is saying something again. So um, he's saying that we will eventually need to... Uh, let me tell you exactly what is in my ear right now from Benzinga. Feds Williams says the, the rates, uh, the Fed will eventually need to cut rates. Like, that's like, it's what I just heard there. So, Way to go, I mean, Captain Obvious. This is what I mean. So, I, I'm not going to base decisions on Williams stuff is a like real this. risk taker. And don't quote me word for word here. I'm just telling you, no, I'm cool. getting like that's very, very basic stuff. Like, Sean just said, he, he quoted Williams yeah. word for word. Yes, I did. That is yeah. the most. Ray, but he did say that. What rate a, cuts, I don't even remember what I just said, but that's what he said. It was that there eventually will be rate cuts. So, I mean, we, I, I think we know that. I mean, here it is right here. Look, feds will, I mean, look, I'm not, no need to change monetary policy. Eventually, oh my God, we are the people's trader right now. Look at this. Uh, he says right here, eventually we will need to cut rates. Look at this. Eventually we will need to cut rates. That's the dumbest comment. He's trying to, you know what I'm saying? Step aside, Steve Leesman. Uh, right there as, yeah, he's the guy on some other station there. And yeah. in possibly a more bold call, yeah. it's 1020, and Ooh. we'll be going to the small cap recap because I can see the future apparently just like Williams. Oh, nice. Quite a few runners to talk about today, including Rent the Runway, R-E-N-T, the ticker for this one, up about 150%, about just shy of 10% short float, float of roughly 2.5 million shares, a so pretty small float here as well. Reporting an EPS miss, but an earnings or sales beat here. So nice look for RENT. We also have a day two mover here, A Dial Pharmaceuticals. They have a float below 4 million shares. Right now trading up about 20% yesterday, announcing some positive data uh, for its alcohol use disorder treatment. And last but not least here, we have e, uh, ELYM, Ilium Therapeutics, announcing they're going to be raising $120 million via private placement and now up about 50 to 60%, guys. Oh, rent the runway was this earnings? Why was it moving? I saw someone say rent before. I just thought they were late on their rent, but the rent is too damn high, and that is, is one of the reasons on why <laughs> the Fed is doing what they're doing. Um, rent the runway. I guess it was the optimistic, an optimistic outlook, huh? No, this is a squeeze. Twenty-three percent short float, one point five million float. So this is not. This is the reaction to earnings where you happen to be squeezing. 
as opposed to like an earnings move because that's clearly a little bit irrational. I personally wouldn't chase this, but 1.5 float is absolutely infinitesimally small. That was a good one. Yeah, like that's, I mean, come on. We have used that before, but that is a good one. That is, that is a word. What's up, Brendo? What the, oh, I don't know, what's up with that EV right there? Oh, that's, oh, that's, it was, you were showing, chilling. We got the couches now there because um, something's happening. I'm still confused by what we're couch. showing here. We're showing Sharif chilling. Oh, Sharif, I can't see that. Oh, yeah, because that's Sean's... Off. I'm like, oh, we can see the back of Brendan's head. How cute, <laughs> how cute is what I saw. Just to, ex just to explain for a quick second, we have a program on us. When we look here, I'm not necessarily looking at the camera so we can see what's on the screen right now, but our trading screens, mine blocks a little bit of that on our side, and then Sean can't see like part of it there, so he couldn't see Sharif. Yeah, I was shot. just like, what is So everyone's like laughing, just chilling out, uh, Sharif chilling out, there's Brendo behind. Um, Big yeah. Patty Ice was, uh, gone. oh, he's, he's <laughs> <clears throat> Patrick has a master's up. He does? That guy's playing Gallagher. Fired. What's going on with our bandwidth but over he's here? Not, but he's not sitting there, he's, oh, but okay. he does have, right, so he does have the master's chill. up, I'll chill. which is fine. Let's be real for a second, Sean, on our trade There was or, supposed to be a uh, rain delay. I know, but on our trading floor, would we not put the TV on the Masters? Usually after about 11 o'clock well, Remember, we used to something. watch Price is Right. We used to watch Dragon's Den we, or Shark's Tank um, and all that. Is that you could, that are we allowed like, to show the Masters? I don't know if we're allowed to show I, the Masters. Let's, let's maybe not put that on. Um, so yeah, we'll find... Okay, there's fair use. You can use it for a little bit of time there. So, Okay, um, we're fine. We will update the Masters as it goes, and uh, that'll be fun to do today. So we'll do that uh, throughout the next couple of days. Why not? Um, okay, so the market is battling back a little bit. We, um, we should have done a pool. It's too I bad. Know. I know we should have done a pool. Uh, we did a pool. Remember we did a pool for um, uh, NCAA, and we didn't do it this year again. We, kept, we, we, screwed, we forgot, man. We screwed up. Screw uh, but okay, that's all good. What was I going to get to? There was something. Uh, I already went to rent. Yeah. Ah, uh, darn it. It'll come back to me in a second. I'm just going to update. Like, the only thing that I'm currently still in, Intel's bouncing. I'll probably reload that. If I get VWAP again on Nikola, we'll get in. So I got 88. So I took some out at 86. I'll get a bit out at 84 and then 82. And if you can figure out that pattern, then congratulations. You understand basic patterns at my seven-year-old. Every two cents, I'm going to bid. So if we can't stock. figure it out, then we are Yeah, no, bad. but look. Is that what you mean? I'm sure 88 off an 89 high. And then it's got support at 86. So I'm, and then you have this support level with that 84 on the way back up and then 82. So like every two cents has been important. So I'm going to take profit in front of every two cent level. And then if I can get more at VWAP, I will. It just hasn't happened for me uh, yet. This is the name that we didn't talk about today. It was, uh, it was Alibaba, unless you did. Yeah, it's so almost sick, you know. Baba is pulling back. It is? Yeah, a little bit. I mean, not a lot. Uh, but it's... Like the afternoon resistance level and where it closed is 74 and a half. The support's oh at 74. God, so if it does yeah. that whole let's chill out moment, I think that could be a good one. And then I wanted to talk quickly about NEO. Okay, so I'm going to slap the fail on myself because it is what it is, but I absolutely 100% should have been short NEO uh, today. There's no question about it. It dipped off the 480 level, which I did miss yesterday. It was a double top. And then right in here of this consolidation is a perfect setup for a consolidation short into here. Uh, that said, you have support at $4.36. So if it gets down there, it might be worth a little bit of a cheeky bid on NIO. Uh, Rivian, I'm out of it. But if it bounces back in, I would look for a VWAP retrace, which would be like $9.75. It's just not there yet. You've only gone up about like 15 cents or so. Need to carry another 15 or 20 before I look for the refill on the short. All right, so you brought up Alibaba, and I was like, oh, my God, I cannot believe it went to 74.50. I looked at the sticky note level, and it was said 74.50 on it. So we should have already had this trade. So I'm stepping into it late, which I don't like to do. Um, sometimes if it, it's already, today is going, like, crazy fast for me. I don't, 1030 is a bit wild. Does it feel like it should be later than that well, for you? What's I, the reason I know that it feels, in, yeah. it feels too early or it feels too late is because I'm still hunting for things the way that I would look for opportunities at 10 o'clock mm. and it's 10.30 and it's like, no, usually you're a little bit more, like you wait more, much more patiently in this half an hour than I think I would at 10. Like at 10 is exactly when I go, all of my ideas that I had or levels that I had, I want to revisit every single one of them and look for entries right at that moment. And now you're in patience mode. So speaking of that, uh, look, Intel's leveling off. I want to try, if this trends down, I want to try to have every single short to pop 
in this name, if that's even possible. It's not going to be it's not going to be that easy. Oh, Carmax, I was intending on trading Carvana to the short side today. Carmax is at a double bottom of sorts as it's breaking down. My first thought is it's SSR down 13%. It's got very very light. I mean, the, the, the liquidity is not the same on Carmax, and I feel like I've never traded it before, but we've traded Carvana before. So if I could short this one instead, maybe a VWAP retracement. The flat bottom break is somewhat appealing on Carmax, but on Carvana it doesn't exist till 75. So it would be a separate kind of trading idea on, on Carvana if Carmax takes out the low. I'd have to find some other way to get in, maybe a short the pop there. Reddit's a possibility, but I didn't pay for locates on it, and I'm usually thinking short. So Reddit, 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 Reddit. Oh my goodness, Reddit was a good break. Happened. Oh no, oh, Reddit, Reddit at 44 maybe. Tesla should have been a break that 170. Yeah, we're short Tesla, so we'll start a new position right now. I was like, what just happened there? Uh, okay, so we got into Tesla. We were waiting for 169.50. Oh, That's what we have. I'm also waiting for 170. I want to short against the 50 period. So that's my trade right now. Tesla's down against the market. The market's starting to head down. I said bears unite, all that stuff. Let's see if we can get that going again here uh, for Tesla, possibly to the downside here. So I like this level. Um, I don't know, it's been pretty weak, right? We've bounced off of 170 a couple times. We have lost. This is the name that we're red on. So, I mean, this could be one of those situations. Oh, as the market comes in, by the way, uh, let's wait for that. I got to flip over to now and start to seriously consider what uh, is the meaning of life on Alibaba because that is starting to go to the downside as Nvidia is going back up. Now, the problem uh, with everything, okay, Alibaba just bounced a little bit. We are long at My 67s goodness. here. So it's not looking, you know, so great. If we break below 50, we can get out of that. But for right now, Alibaba has fallen back in. We're underneath VWAP. Should have been a little more diligent on this one. I'm not sure if I like this so much. The market's low here, so let's be careful. We're under VWAP. We sort of called this move. We like to be short here. This is a little bit of a sketchy area for me. Uh, but Tesla coming in. We'll take a fill again. If we can get 50 cents at 169, oh, we'll do that. Um, and then hold the rest. It worked for us the first time, and then it didn't. Uh, so we got 40% out that time, lost on 60%. Tried again at 50, lost there. Let's go short here and go over to the desk with Adara because it's a crypto minute. We did mention this upgrade earlier, but I want to bring everyone's attention to Robinhood again here, H-O-O-D. Uh, and the reason for that is because a lot of this downgrade from Citigroup had to do with regards uh, to Robinhood and crypto specifically with the analysts saying that they mostly, I guess, accredit Robinhood's 44% year-to-date rise to strengthen crypto trading and saying that if they if they see a bull, pullback in Bitcoin prices, this could also lead to a pullback in the stock. So interesting analysis here from Citigroup basically saying that Bitcoin uh, is correlated to Robinhood's performance there. In terms of Bitcoin itself right now, continuing to have some issues with the 72,000 plus level. Right now, we're just darting slightly below that 70,000 level right now. Just right now, we're kind of at the precipice. Just crossed above 70,000 again, so definitely topping and trading here from that 69 to 70,000 level, up about 2%. Ethereum just still holding on to that 3,500 level. Uh, and a lot of these other crypto names pretty strong today. Solana up 2.5%, Dogecoin up 1%, Cardano up 1.5% here. And we are brought to you by Benzinga Pro. You can sign up today for 50% off their premier news and research platform for retail traders with code TTV, capital letters. Use the link in the description to go to checkout. All right. The rent is even higher now. Yeah, it's getting it's paid halted, out. <laughs> halted at twenty eighty eight. Um, the thirty, it's the yeah. cap is twenty one even. It was just twenty one ninety a second ago, then twenty one fifty. But the theoretical auction price sits now. It's at twenty one fifty again. So it's all over the place. It'll be open in five minutes because it's a volatility halt. So that'll be two minutes from now. Like I said, I'm not chasing it. But you know what? If you just blindly hit enter, uh, sorry, that's what I do. Bid and enter. Then you would have, at the moment we brought it up, it's like you would have been, you would have worked, but I'm just not doing it. Uh, we said we'd fade Tesla back into VWAP. It just tagged 170. I got in here, and we'll see what happens. I think Tesla, underneath a flat bottom break, looks pretty yes, appealing sir. to the downside. So that's what we're going to work with on the short side of the trade. We'll keep our eye on rent, but I don't, I don't anticipate trading that stock at all today.
All right, we're back green on Tesla. We did, I mean, we just talked about this trade. We, we liked it into that 170. I'm glad we both have this uh, as we are now short 170.20 on Tesla. Remember, we were red on this name. We're now green on it, but it's position pending. Um, I'm bidding 50s right now, 169.50 to see if we get a fade back into that one. Then I'm going to put a bid right now at 169.20. Um, hopefully we do get that dip down and we were able to take advantage of this one. Wow, Alibaba, thank you so much. We were nervous hands. Uh, on that on that one for sure for Alibaba when that just bounced back up there on this move of probably the Fed rah, 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 I don't know what just happened there but uh, nice move upside we took a big time advantage of that and got out of half of our Alibaba so honestly I like the trade but I'm gonna wait for that one now like Alibaba if it breaks through 74.50, we're going to be gone. That's a level that we liked. Uh, but look what's happening right now again. We talked about shorting that Tesla against 170. I liked this level right there. Um, so we put that short on. And let's see now if it can print back into the downside. It potentially will not. Uh, but 170.50 is going to be my out now. Give ourselves 30 cents. We're in the money, 55 cents. 30 cents worth of risk for me on this trade seems reasonable as NVIDIA makes it itself this is what's affecting my net rate. It's not really affecting my net, but it is um, because NVIDIA has been dancing around here. We had an unrealized gain there of like seven or eight bucks. And we, we noticed this. We put a bid there, but just too late as NVIDIA is back up to 882. We're still waiting for 883. Uh, we've got more news with Adara. Yeah, interesting um, report here coming from the Ford Authority. Keep an eye on Ford and Tesla. Apparently now Ford coming up with this Tesla competitive conquest bonus cash incentive. So current Tesla owners can get an additional what $1,500 uh, off of the price of a new F, uh, Ford F100 Lightning. So basically giving Tesla owners a discount or an incentive bonus for a Ford F100 or F150 Lightning. So interesting note here with regards to F and TSLA. I'm not sure I heard that. Okay. No, I was just, um, I, I said, Sharif sort of laughed when I said, I was like, ooh. Uh, because like, honestly, like, I, I mean, if you are uh, a Tesla owner and you're deciding to switch over to Ford, I mean, I could, you may have other life issues, but the thing about that is I'm-, I'm I, just, I don't around. see the synergy there. No, the thing is, is that, I guess it's for the F-150, the Lightning, okay. right? So um, Ford, that's their, that's the number one selling I, but How vehicle. many F-150 people are probably remotely even Tesla well, people? I think it's first? a good, whatever. Maybe, yeah, I, I own what, Ford I shares and Tesla shares. So can we all just be friends? I think we can. I think, well, I actually got to check my stop on Ford. Uh, I haven't looked at the stock today. Yeah, I'm going to put that down because I got a new position in, in Robinhood. Uh, Robinhood did make a triple top up here. It's got the resistance level. I kept waiting for it to get into yesterday's highs. It's like, okay, I'll take it this time at 25 and risk it to the top for the view upper trades. And if I get out, I'll wait for the 850 and play it in the other, play it in the same direction. But I just got the eyeballs. Like, I'm a little surprised NVIDIA is doing this as I look back over at Intel. Okay, Intel's not really at the highs. That's a good sign. I don't want Intel to be following NVIDIA because that's generally a problem for the short. But if this gets to the 885 level again, I'd be inclined to look for a failed breakout. Like it breaks this level and can't get past 890. Then I think that could be a little bit of a fade in that 885 to 890 zone. So I'm going to keep my eyes on NVIDIA. Tesla's chilling at that 17 uh, currently. As I said, Nikola, we go, oh, I did get a reload in Nikola. I'm able to get some more shares in there and, and like catch some 88s and get back on that bid. So just to kind of a rinse and repeat on Nikola as we'll go to Adara. I got it working in your face. More updates coming from this Marvell AI era conference happening from 10 a.m. to 12 p.m. Eastern time today. So we have another about an hour and a half of this conference. Marvell saying that they have sent a new hyperscale customer. They're working towards an AI accelerator, which is in design with plans to take into production 2026. Marvell also saying that they recorded over 50, uh, 550 million. Yeah, sorry, 550 million dollars in AI related revenue in 2023. So. Interesting uh, notes here coming from MRVL with regards to AI. We should be hearing more from them within the next hour and a half, guys. All right, well. In the face of the earpiece, it keeps failing. Not yeah, like yeah. in your face, you guys. No, no, Does no. this thing disconnect every five seconds? So. I win for and now. Face well. uh, just a quick update for you guys on the rent. It's continuing to go higher. See, if now this inflation gauge has gotten completely out of hand, up 200%. Um, no one ever went broke taking profit. I, I haven't said that. Rent. I haven't said that today. I'm just, I, at least one time I'm going to say it. So there it is. No one ever went broke taking profit. Congratulations to anyone that has loaned that stock. 
you know, we've seen these things sometimes hold up for the afternoon. Um, other times we'll check back at two o'clock and it's right back where it started. NVIDIA's at that 885, yeah. so I'm gonna be glued to this looking for a, like a false breakout at 885, it's a setup I'm looking for. So Come break on, the high that comes back down. Tesla, I'm bidding at 50, so th this hasn't filled yet, I'm assuming. Nope, I'm at 54. Come on down, you're oh, the next 70. contestant to fill those bids. Let's go Tesla, and bang, there it is. El Diamond Hando, uh, hopefully we can have this move into the downside right now. But Diamond Hands has been, um, you know, very, very risky hands uh, right now because look what's happening uh, to everyone's friend, and not mine temporarily, um, is NVIDIA. So um, it, it's pulling back in a little bit, uh, back up a little bit. We are short against 885. Just making sure that I got a refresh, make sure we do have these stops. This is, I feel like this trade is fine. I, Marvell is still um, blasting around. So as Marvell keeps talking, we do worry about Nvidia looking to take out 885. We're out if it breaks that. So we'll turn a winning trade into a losing trade, which we hate to do. But honestly, I don't, um, I, I was here to take the risk. It'll still be fine, but we hate giving money back, and that's exa exactly what we could be doing here. Nvidia is on the NVIDIA. one stock. Uh, at this time of day, it's I the one stock out. that usually I'm willing to, to roll what you'd risk at the open or the close because most things aren't going to move, like the big, big, big moves at this time of day. But I feel like NVIDIA does. So I, I think it's usually worth it at this time. Uh, but the 885 is holding. 96 is the current high, and it's not breaking it. The setup I'm looking for would be a false break. So if it doesn't break go. the top, then I'm probably not getting into this one. But I'm not going to take my eyes off it because it's the kind of break. thing that will happen really, really fast. And once again, it gets to 96. I have a, no, I didn't see it break. I visually didn't see it break, but now I have an 885.11. There it goes. There's the break. Ah, uh, boo. I want oh, to that failed break. Uh, it just failed pretty much. Give me, give me, give me. I'll try one more time. No fill, no fill, no fill. All right, let's see if we get it. Um, all right, so we're back into this name. Uh, okay, oh, finally, thank you, NVIDIA. All right, so it did break higher there. We are back into the short. Um, again, no real expectations here. That was a failed break of 885, but we got punched, we, we got punched out ourselves uh, there because, because 885.30 was our fill, so not good. I don't like that slippage, but again, look at the spread to be expected, but we'll take some money back on that one as now it's falling back in. Okay, so now we got 70 cents back in the money on this, uh, maybe back down to 881.50, but who knows, nicely done. A dollar back in the money now, but honestly, um, we've lost, like, I'll consider that an L because we lost on that. So I'm not um, super, super pleased with that break, but hey, it did break higher. And look, look at Marvell, we do have to go to Adara, but I just want to show you guys, like, this is not doing anything right now. So, you know, maybe that talk about there being a problem with NVIDIA Marvell, it's probably just the whole semis. They're still starting uh, to go to the upside. While all that melee was happening, we got multiple fills down here on Tesla. Um, and then we just got short again. So we're, you know, we did pretty good, man. We've we've made the money back on Tesla. We'll see if we can get a little bit lower on this one. We just reloaded again at 170.25 or whatever, 170.20 there. Um, so coming back, we'll see if we can get another bid here um, in and around 170. Let's just put that out right now. There it is. So we'll take that fill, a quick little 20 cents, and now we'll wait for a little bit of a lower move here uh, coming hopefully for Tesla. I think we got called through. Yeah, it's, uh, it is 1040. This is the time we see that big board with Adara in front of it for Sector Watch. Yeah. A lot of these sectors are going to be weak here with the exception of some of these semiconductors still holding on to the upside. NVIDIA, Broadcom, AMD all looking really strong here. Apple also pretty strong as well. Despite the price target decrease we got this morning from JP Morgan. Speaking of JP Morgan, a lot of these banks still pretty weak here in the finance sector as we head into major bank earnings, which will begin tomorrow. We're getting Wells Fargo, Citigroup, and JP Morgan, among others. So definitely stay tuned for that for the start of the Q1 earnings season. Health technology a little bit weaker here as well. Energy minerals very much to the downside. Health services, retail trade with the exception of Costco, pretty weak here. Uh, consumer durables, communications, a lot of these sectors going to be a little bit more negative. One interesting bright spot though here, transportation, Uber and UPS to the upside, guys.
All right. Uh, I was just telling uh, the professor over here that we did have, obviously, a much bigger position on NVIDIA before eventually uh, getting called away. So that, that sucks. But um, all right, we just take some more out there. I just said, let, you know what? Let's, again, just put this back in. We got 883.36, $1.44. But um, so right here, we just took another piece out. We are waiting for more, though, guys. Like, I'm, I'm, I want more uh, downside on this play. Uh, Tesla's starting to crank a little bit lower, hopefully. Uh, now 169.50, clear as day. We'll get something out at 75 as we'll try to respect that 50 period. And guess what's happening over here? It is another sticky note. Absolute damn banger one more time at 74.50. Look what the bottom of Alibaba is today. 74.53. This will be my time to wax poetic. Uh, we won't wax that much here because it's just we're very, very quick. Um, there it is. 74.50 long, yesterday's close, very strong name. We like Alibaba, put it on the board as we'll ride that uh, to the north side there for uh, Alibaba. But yeah, I mean, I'm still a little bit, I'm not shook because By the way, we're Amazon. professionals, but that, that should have been, uh, that's too bad. I know you got I, no, I didn't that. even. We both had the same. I didn't thing. have it I, oh, and, and I short, never okay. got it. So I'll oh, show you. good for you then. I was yeah. looking very, look, I was glued to it and then it did the 885 break. Now. Admittedly, I kind of thought it was going to break and go a little more than 40 cents. So it reversed probably much quicker than I was anticipating. I should back off. It's not giving me these spells. So it, I thought it was going to maybe get up to 86, like that dollar move up and then come back down in. So I just was not crossed far enough on the way back down and didn't get that fill short. But that's a scalp short where you should be in it right now. And you already, you'd already be out of some. You take the couple of bucks, or at least I would take the couple of dollars and then look for the view up retracement. At this point, getting it back in on the way up is, to me, not the way to go unless it sets the exact same trade up above 885. So I'm going to have to back away from that. I was able to pick up. When that happened, Intel was breaking view up. And I was like, ah, oh, I wanted to get some here. I wanted the next curl. I had to wait till it got through VWAP to grab it. So I am back. I did add back into Intel. I still have that Nikola. Robinhood, oddly enough, did not. It's consolidating. So this, look at the, the shorts when I don't take it, wick top flush. Wick top flush. Get in, consolidation. So if there wasn't a reason oh, wow. to have a tight stop here at 1830 and literally get out if it breaks 31, I'm not giving it any extra sense here. I'm getting out if it breaks 31. I know it's a really tight stop, but it's also showing me a lot of strength. And okay, so here now is a break again of NVIDIA. It would have worked if you had that first trade, but yeah. remember, it's got this local high up at 890. 890 is in play. So I, I wanted it somewhere in this range, 885 to 890. The first shot would have worked for a scalp trade. Now the 890 level does become a factor. Uh, Tesla's it's 40 cents against, I'm kind of, I didn't get the fill at one to one, so if it breaks out, then we'll take the L on Tesla. Nothing going on yet in Nikola. I sort of talked about um, Intel and Robinhood already. Amazon, I wanted to mention, is back above VWAP, so it's holding higher lows. I got out thinking we'd get in here at 185 and a half. Never happened. I got to start thinking about VWAP now. Now Amazon looks a little bit stronger. We'll go for the VWAP dip. It will have been a mistake to be conservative on the Amazon long uh, this morning, it looks like. Yeah, 100%. That, that's what I'm trying to do as well right now is trying to figure out like what names that we looked at might be, and it's a great call because Amazon's one of those names, of course. Um, but you know, come on, Baba. Let's try to find some names that we liked long to begin with because now the market's starting to break and we will slap again. Like, unfortunately, we didn't, we didn't wind up losing that much on NVIDIA, but we are down on it. I mean, I can't keep fighting the law because... The law continues to win, unfortunately. Um, and that's a good thing for, for law-abiding citizens, but we're not trying to be one of those. Um, so uh, right there, that, that was... It's an underrated uh, movie. Uh, yeah, very, very underrated. I mean, my rap sheet is about as long oh, as, you know... Uh, uh, Jamie Foxx, uh, and what's his face? Um, oh, Gerard, Blue... Uh, Butler. Uh, is that that movie? Yeah. Oh, you know, law-abiding law citizen. Oh, law-abiding. I, I won't I didn't say, see that. I won't say what happened because if I even describe it, it kind of spoils it. So I, I won't think even. I saw that one. I was always thinking about like Chris movie. Tucker and Jackie Chan. There, they had that. Uh, no, that's a uh, um, the, rush hour. Oh, rush hour. Those were really funny. I, I don't know if those. Um, I tried to watch one of those with my kids, and I was like, you know, it's kind of like 
I remember it being a little more funny than maybe it is, but I don't know. Um, I watched yeah, maybe Shanghai the, Noon. Right. Oh, um, that was on, yeah, that was on AMC. Or, I saw that. I had a summer job. Owen Wilson. Yeah, it was Owen Wilson. Yeah. I had a summer job where I was literally installing, like, the flip signs um, at, like, it was at the bridge going to the U.S. in Windsor, and you're up, like, 50 feet. And we had no harnesses, by the way. That was a safety violation, buddy. But uh, I think so, yeah. Whatever. I was trying to make some money for university. And if we get back to the hotel, he put us up in a hotel. He's like, yeah, we're going to watch a movie, but I'm going to decide, the boss guy. And he's like, we're watching Shanghai Noon. Boss Everyone's guy. like, Shanghai Noon? Man, that was terrible. That was a Jackie Chan movie that should have been way funnier. Like, they tried to do Rush Hour as if they were in the Old West. And that just I like work. Owen Wilson, but... No, I, no, no, no. I like Owen Wilson, but the movie was trash. Let's be real. Like, you can do a comedy thing with Jackie Chan with... Pri yeah, can uh, we get a Kentucky. definitive opinion on the movie? Oh, the movie was trash. But uh, the short in Robin Hood was also trash. Captain Protein back there says it's great. <laughs> what, you liked it? No, not this guy. Ka Ty is Captain Protein back Why there. Why is Ty Captain Protein? Why is Ty Captain Protein? Do we need to bring Brankles over here to discuss this? Oh, I don't think, I don't think you were here. <laughs> Brankles? No, 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 no. It's, it's not... It, I can explain to you. I don't think you, you must have not been here if you don't know it. There's no controversy or anything. It's just, I'm just confused. One day, I think it was, and we'll talk about what's for lunch, but I think it was maybe chicken or something like that. Shanghai. And there wasn't much lunch. protein left there. Okay. And my guy Ty over here had some protein on his plate, which, not in my opinion, but in others, could have potentially been excess protein. So he had the heavy hand with the chicken. And, uh, but I think, actually, I think it's the algo room, and I, I know specifically I know, uh, who it is. I know there. exactly. I'm pointing the fingers. I know exactly who in the algo That's right. room Twitter has, a, fingers. has a heavy hand. That's right. That's right. See what I'm saying? No, I got my guy over there. Captain the Protein lunch, and me you are scoop, you, it's together. A scoop. So, like, you're supposed to take your own serving of it, but some people take a little more than others. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not naming any, I'm not naming any names in the algo room, but I know exactly who you're talking about, Sean. Um, let's go to Money Talks with Adara. Here's the, the DXY here, another move to the upside. Yesterday we broke above that previous area of resistance around that 105 area. Have not looked back currently around 105.50 to 105.60. So nice look here for the DXY. We did get some more economic data yesterday. We got that higher than expected CPI print, or sorry, more economic data this morning. We got that higher than expected CPI print yesterday. Today we get PPI uh, for month, the month over month and year over year, both coming in 0.1 lower than expected. So 2.1% versus 2.2% for the year over year. 0.2% versus 0.3% for the month over month. We also got jobless claims slightly lower than expected here. So 20, uh, 211,000 versus 216,000 expected for those jobless claims numbers. Also worth noting, we have two more Fed speakers coming later in the day. Fed's Collins at 12, Fed's Bostix at 1.30. Also notable, we had some comments from Fed's Williams saying that they will have to lower rates at some point. He doesn't see a rate a hike coming up, so he does not see a rate hike in the future necessarily. So some mixed comments there coming from Feds Williams. Also worth noting, here is the uh, euro to the USD, to the downside here after the uh, European Central Bank decides not to change the rates. So this lack of rate change bringing the euro to USD relationship to the downside here, guys. Uh, yeah. So this was just pointed out by some people and uh, some of the traders, yeah, and Sean true. just confirmed it. Um, for, it turns out OJ Simpson's passed away. Uh, due to cancer, and I understand. I didn't really know he had a cancer. It, it cuts both there. ways, obviously controversial figure, but you know when someone passes, you try to remember the best. Uh, you know, everybody has a family, um, and everybody has like their own legacy. Seventy six. He was a heck of an athlete. He was a pretty good actor as well. I love but, how it uh, says acquitted of murder dies at seventy six. Like, come on, let's go ABC. Well, uh, I think that's sort of the thing. Like everyone always wants to frame. Bit. Everyone wants to frame it how they want. I just sort of feel like yeah, that's. But it's like bringing. I guess you know what people that might not know who he is. I don't no. know. I and it, it is important at a time like that too, like to remember, you know, who the actual victims were in that case, and everyone seems to forget about uh, what happened to. Seventy six. You know what? I was seventy six is not. I mean, seventy six. That is literally. It's a good life. The mean. I'm pretty sure that is the average um, life expectancy of North American male. Yeah. I'm gonna. I mean, we can look that up, but I'm pretty sure that is. What Obviously, it is. the best running back. Was, well, in Buffalo Bills history. But uh, as a Bills. No, fan. no. Maybe I think OJ was probably. Yeah. The Hard juice. to disagree. Hard to disagree. Of an athlete, man. He is now, um, yeah, no longer with us. No, I'm not saying you can't talk about the bad. I'm willing to talk about the good, talk about the bad of anybody. I just feel like in the moment that the person passes, like that's that moment that's for the family. 
Well, that's uh, what I'm that saying. The weird. headline seems to be a little bit, uh, a little bit weird there. Oh, but but you okay. cut, yeah, you go both. Um, all right, let's, um, uh, there let's was something else I wanted to get to. Oh, oh we, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, we got out of Tesla. So, here's the VWAP did get reclaimed. I'm gonna do my. I said I would do my best to be short every single pop. But it's been miss the pop and then get it down here, miss the pop and then get it five cents away. But we are still working back what toward the, the low of the day here uh, on Intel. Nvidia didn't quite get to nine nine ninety. If Nvidia gets to nine hundred and ninety dollars, I mean, come on, man, I'm what? not oh not doing God, it. Eight ninety okay. didn't okay. get to eight ninety. Eight eighty eight is a current high, so it didn't really give me the setup for the short at eight ninety that I was looking for. So I guess we have to be. Now, let's be patient once again. I mean, it's 8.53, or 10.53. It's that time of day where you want to get the perfect setup, and if you can get it, great. I said I would go VWAP hunting on Amazon. Uh, it's about to pull back into VWAP, it seems like now. So we'll see if we can get that bid. Don't tell me. I'm at VWAP on, well, I mean, I'm canceling. I was at VWAP on Rivian. It just curled at 9.70 and is now at 9.45. This is your dog of the day. Maybe Lucid is going to tank. Lucid doesn't move anymore, but I feel like the day that it takes 250 is gonna be pretty nasty. But uh, nothing available just yet on Lucid. It's Tesla that we're in at 170 for the flat bottom. It was a flat bottom break-ish, and now it's a consolidation underneath. Uh, but Tesla's catching a bit of a bid here. So if we lose, I feel like it should have been like, I should have prioritized a reload on Rivian over getting into Tesla, but I can't rewind the tape. I was on the offer. I just didn't get it on Rivian, and that's your dog of the day, uh, getting absolutely crushed. Remember, it's like $9.23. That's SSR. So it'll be 10% down on Rivian if it goes to 9.22. Could be a nice little buy off the 9 even as an SSR bounce. Yeah, we, um, yeah, good because Tesla was actually on my mind. We've actually started to cover. We got a couple of covers there uh, when we dipped down into that. I'm still looking at NVIDIA. I want to look at AMD as well. So we just got covers at 170 there. So we're taking like just pennies. We are almost back to green um, on this name as we mentioned that. So I'm pretty, pretty happy with that, needless to say. So let's just wait to see if it does continue to fall down. I am bidding 169.50 uh for tesla to see if we can get back in in and around that 50 period ma so that's something that um, i'm going to look at there on tesla and see if we can get uh, a little bit of a fill in that name so that's one thing that i'm doing right now um and then other than that just hovering around man i mean alibaba making those moves higher as well i think uh we'll see if that can hold out for a little bit of hope up here uh near 7450 again i think we'll get that reload i said we mentioned what was for lunch uh, and we just got it, so let's do that. Let's go what's for lunch quickly and because we got to get ready for the midday. It's still doing breakouts. What are we doing over there? Okay, range trading psychology. So here we go, man. If you are Italian, you might like what is happening today for lunch. So there's certain things that, is, that are Italian fare, but today... What? Huh? Teriyaki glazed meatballs. I no, saw meatballs there, I got excited, and then all of a sudden they're teriyaki glazed. But I don't mind that. I like teriyaki. So let's wait to see teriyaki glazed beef meatballs with Asian vegetables and rice. So I'm okay with that. That should be nice. Huh? So it's gonna be bok choy. Probably bok choy, yeah. No, I know that for them, they don't say bok choy, but it's gonna be bok choy. Yeah, baby bok choy. Or it's always, maybe Chinese broccoli might be nice. I mean, that I could be a little, little nice to see that get thrown down in there. Hmm. Yeah, see, when you said meatballs, I got excited too. Yeah. Oh my goodness, what was the name of the. Ah, oh, now I can't. Shoot, I had yeah, to. Sometimes you get the meatball subs, those are like my favorite, man. There is this sandwiches. ridiculously good on, pizza Tesla. place when we were down in spring training. And it's it, like, I mean, really, the pizza was fantastic. And I, I can't remember the name. What they had, find a good but they, they had these meatball sides. And I was like, yo, I'm By getting the way, that. And the meatball was delicious. Uh, Tesla's back underneath 170. Yeah, I'm going to take a bid here. NVIDIA. I just took a bid. NVIDIA didn't get to 890. It's so close. I want to give it a chance to actually get to that level. SMCI is also making a move to the upside. But Tesla's starting to come back. And I took a bid there as well. But I'm, I'm glued to NVIDIA for the 890 level. Because after missing the first shot at 885, I kind of don't want to miss this one at 890. 
Okay, um, oh, uh, we already did what's for lunch. So I was just, yeah, you just talked about Tesla, but again, we're on the same kind of tip here. There goes Tesla down to the downside. We are now 75 cents in the money on Tesla. Still a little shook up by that Nvidia trade. Amazon's been a good one for us all day, every day. Uh, not every day, but today it was. And it's only because we got this one fluke kind of dip. Um, we talked about 185.50. If not, it would still have been a good day, but that's really what set us apart. Uh, today on Amazon was that one, Phil. Other than that, it was a pretty muted day. We now turn positive. Remember what we said. We said this to Adara. We said this to Sharif. We say this to ourselves, and I say it to you. If there's a name that you like and you feel that um, it's hitting levels, it makes sense to you, you go back to the well. Now, with that being said, does not work all of the time, which is why I have left our friend NVIDIA alone for a couple minutes. We, we, we got that money in, we were pretty proud of ourselves um, until it did not break 74. We were at 874.50, it just never hit us there. Um, and then we had this happen, we shorted in and around those highs, we got it once, um, we lost, then we got it again, we made money back, and then we got taken out for flatter, 50 cent hit uh, at the end. So trying to be stubborn sometimes works, sometimes doesn't, and I'm realizing that more often than not, it does not work. So we are getting out of that trade, living to see another day, and on Tesla, the same kind of thing. Have the ability and check out the podcast, which will be filmed tomorrow. Yes. And then you can te check it out on uh, uh, Saturday, Saturday morning. Saturday morning. Anywhere that you get your... Uh, this is my segue after that just popped up. We're just going to... Yeah, we're showing the desk there yeah, on, on purpose because we wanted to show uh, that no one was there and that Adara and Sharif are getting Locked ready to rock and roll over here. I oh. just want to say before I throw it, there's only a minute left. This is, we were long Tesla. We wrote down the long, we liked the long at 170. We took it. That's 170 up to 170.80. Then we tried it. We lost it when it broke 170. Then we tried 169.50, lost that. Then we were like, you know what? Let's try the short again. So that's what we've been doing, playing the momentum to the downside after sort of a relook at Tesla. So we liked the long, thought it could have been strong. Once we realized it wasn't, we hit the short, and now we're back over to Positiveville on Tesla so again. before we get out of here yeah, I, oh, you'll yeah. see me not in Tesla like I actually keystroked um, instead of bidding I to get out of shares I actually bid and reverse loss so a bit too many shares and I just punched it out right away and then if Tesla goes up from here it goes up yeah. but I did not want to be long Tesla so I just punched out of shares so I'm not, not in it it was a keystroke error yeah. uh, we're just in Intel and Nikola just to update because it's, it's it's literally 11 right now 37 breaks on Intel, and I'll treat that as a separate trade. But it's a double bottom from yesterday's lows, and I want to respect it. Um, let's see what happens. I mean, you're going to learn every single day the market wants to teach you something, and that's what we're here for. But we dedicate the middle of the day specifically to that, and that's why I call, I, I think the professor is Captain Protein when he eats 27 million eggs a day, but apparently he's not, so I learned this morning something new that I learned. Well, well. I just made that up on the fly. Okay. Okay, fair enough. So it wasn't The story a... was last week, but I made the, the, the Captain okay. Protein thing was, was brand new. It just caught me off guard. It's all about content. But Sharif and Adara, go get them. It is Learn to Trade. Which I had to think of. Had to think about. What is up, beautiful people? Welcome to Learn or How to Trade, uh, formerly known as the Midday Show. That is your girl, Adara, and I'm Sharif. And we're going to wait on everybody to come on over from the other stream. Yesterday it took a little bit of time, so let's pack our patience today. And we're gonna be talking about patience today, let me tell you, in the lesson. We already have big Kyle Burdett in the chat. What's up, my man? Let's get it, yes, sir.